Hi guys this is Hirasaki. This story is all about what if Naruto had the chance to exist in the DC universe. Living a new life in another reality, Naruto now must handle a lot of complications of him interacting with various heroes, villains, and anti-heroes. How will things go with them interacting with a nobody? Before we start kindly like and subscribe to this channel and look over the description box for the author of this amazing storyline. Welcome aboard! Chapter 10, Cat Scratch Fever On a nice, winter day with the sun somewhat beaming past the clouds to still keep its dark day, people were walking about on their daily lives with not much of a care on anything else but their daily tasks. With all of the commotion going on, no one would have even bothered to look around in some of the most secluded areas of Gotham. From some of the more seedier districts to back alley ordeals, no one would be keeping a close eye to many of their activities, except for few depending on the time of day. Niare Cat cried out as it walked through the alleyways looking around for its its goal. Its black fur and emerald green eyes made it blend very well into the dark area with just its bright eyes and collars shining a bit to give off the hint that it was there. One might wonder why is this cat important, while well, this little one is named Isis and she is looking for her master. Her master being one Selena Kyle otherwise known as Catwoman. She had been waiting for weeks for her master's return and she had been sorrowful during all this time. Sure there was her master's friend, long black-haired woman that helped take care of her but she didn't have that kind of feeling given off like her master did. That woman was more of an aunt in her perspective while her master was more of a mother in all sense of the word. Isis loved her ever since she was just a small kitten and took care of her every day to the point of the black feline imprinting on her as her mother and no one will replace her master. On one night weeks ago when she and her master were going out for their nightly walks, she had caught sight of an interesting individual inside of the clock tower. Much like her master, Isis had watched the person with interest and amazement with her thinking that the person could have been better doing such tricks than her master. Then the bell of the tower rang causing her master to slip and latch onto something quickly on instinct. As for the feline, it fell off its grasp while falling downward to its imminent demise were it not for the help of the masked individual. Isis didn't know what had occurred as it was truly scared on what happened. She was shaking like a leaf and didn't know what to do. But the man's presence, it was, comforting and warm. He comforted her, cared for her, and fed her that made her slowly forget the frightening experience of almost losing all her lives at once. During the whole thing, she slipped something underneath her collar that seemed to itch a little but when her master found her and comforted her, she found what was was in the collar that made her truly happy. It wasn't until some time later when she met the masked individual again when she was greeted by his warm comfort as he was petting her. It made her feel as she was being petted by her master, but that is impossible since she only has one master, one mother. It was quite confusing on how to figure that one out. On the night when she last saw her master, her aunt took her to someone's residence and felt something in there that reminded her of the one person that had the warm comfort. That confusion was answered when the masked individual came in without the mask and he had the same radiated warmth as ever that made her enjoy it. Things didn't go so well as he felt sad, lowly that Isis had to do what she could to make the warm man happy so she can feel the comfort on those few days. But as time went on, Isis was starting to wonder where her mother went to and when she will be coming back. It started to frighten her that she wanted to go out and look for her. At first Isis decided to break out of the warm man's residence and get back into her home and wait for her mother's return. But days rolled by in the same fashion and her master hasn't returned to bask her in her motherly love. Not even the warm man's comfort could help her out this time as she was missing her master, her mother, she needed to find her. So here she is for some time now, searching every nook and cranny she can access to so Isis can find her mother. She heard a vehicle come into the alleyway as she moved out of the way so she wouldn't get squashed and whatnot. Then two people stepped out of it, a man and a woman, that radiated coldness and made her want to get as far away from them as possible. Of course, they started to walk towards her and she was trapped on the dead end of the alleyway with no way out. Dirty, stinking furball. Keep wondering why we have to keep rounding up these verm vermine. The woman said with a net in hand. Cause the boss said so and we are paid to do so. The large man replied. 
Shut it paunch and nab that cat. The woman said getting paunch to throw the net at Isis. Meow. Isis cried out as she was in the net, trying to get free, but it was no use. The net was raised with the green-eyed, black cat trapped inside. All right paunch, get that inside of its cage and let's move on. Right Jesse. He said as he walked to the vehicle and threw the cat inside of its containment. Isis soon got free from the net but was stopped when the cage closed shut making her cry out for help. She cried out for her master, her mother, the warm man, anyone to save her and bring her back home. Gotham Cafe Sorry I'm late, the traffic was terrible getting over here. It's quite alright Harley and besides I just got here. Naruto said as he saw Harley sit down at the cafe table. The Uzumaki was wearing a thick button-up shirt with loose jeans and snow boots with his jacket hanging off from the chair. Good to know. The asylum intern said with a smile as she adjusted to her seat after taking off her coat. She wore a few layers to keep her upper body warm while wearing a pair of tight jeans and non-slip shoes. Harley had to take off her glasses and clean them off due to them fogging up when transitioning between the cold air to the warm. So did you order anything before I got here? Just some water with lemons and limes. Didn't want to order anything to eat just yet. Naruto said to her getting the blonde woman to nod. It's been a few weeks since the two first met at the asylum when Naruto had dropped off Pam. Things started out well on their first interactions with one another since they needed to work with each other in the coming times to get Pam back together. So during the various times when Naruto stopped on by to visit Pam, he would chat with Harley as much as possible. Those conversations were mostly fo focused on how much he knows about the botanist so Harley could try to delve into the shared personalities of the redhead's mind and work from there. In their first few sessions, things were going well on introductory phases and learning basic things about one another. Though when Harley brought up most of the information from what she learned from Naruto, it wasn't all that great. Flashback. Where did you learn about that? Ivy yelled out at the intern. Crap. Should have timed that bit better. Harley thought to herself as she shortly berated herself on what she did. Things were going pretty well for starters on how the session was going but with the recent outrage made Harley forget what led up to the blowout. I'll ask again. Where did you learn on how my mother died? Ivy cried out demanding the answer. F from Mr. Uzumaki Ms. Isley. Harley said with a stutter as she cowered a bit behind her chair in a comedic fashion. H how could he, how dare he tell someone about that sensitive part of my past? Ivy yelled as she started pacing around the room while pulling on her hair. It wasn't his fault, Ivy. Pamela said to her darker half indicating with the shift on vocal tones and body language. He possibly didn't know that it was alright for him to tell someone about that. Surely you could forgive him on that. It was an interesting case with Pamela Lillian Isley from what Harley noted. With most split personality cases, the two consciousness would speak to each other inside of their mind. But Pamela was an interesting one that both consciousness actually switch back and forth at will. Practically instantaneously with no big breaks in between like most split persona cases. From what she learned from Naruto, Naruto that when the two actually sync up, both voices are speaking at the same time. Hump fine. I'll forgive our consort on his slight mistake. But he better make up for it when he shows back up again. Ivy said with her arms crossed. That was another thing that Harley found interesting when working with the two was Ivy calling Naruto either her consort or king at times. But the intern thought it was just because Ivy thought she was the queen or goddess of nature itself so she just pushed that bit off to the side. Please forgive my sister on her outburst Dr. Quinzel, Pamela said apologetically to her but I would like to know why you thought it was good to bring that information up in this session? I agree with my sister on that and I ask the same thing obviously. Ivy stated as she harshly looked at Harley. Harley stood back up and went around the chair while facing the two with a downtrodden look. Sayal look, I'm sorry on what I did was uncalled for and I shouldn't have brought up such sensitive information like that. 
I'm new at this and I want to try my best to get a good handle in the profession. I didn't think things through not knowing you would blow out like that. It's just that I promised Mr. Naruto that I would do everything I can to help you two out so you can be with him happily. Both Pam stared at the intern as they could tell she really meant on what she said. Naruto really wanted the two of them to try and work out their problems and get things solved and Harley was wanting to help take care of it. It made Ivy feel like an ass while Pamela felt sorry for the intern. Say look Dr. Quinzel, we can understand what you're trying to do but please, try tread carefully on what you say from what you learn from Naruto. Pamela said to the blonde before Ivy took over. Much of the information we trusted with our king is very important to us and would have been better to hear from the source than from the messenger. I understand that and once again I'm sorry. Harley replied back to the meta. Meta. Then apology accepted. Pam said in sitch. But shouldn't there be something I should do to make up for what I've done? The intern asked. This got them to pause and adopt a thinking pose as they discussed things in their head on what the blonde should do in return. There is one thing that came to mind. Pamela said to the intern. Which is what exactly? Harley asked in hopes it wasn't too bad or too demeaning. Pam went up to Harley and sat her down onto the patient's couch as the meta sat on the doctor's chair. They soon picked up the blonde's notepad and pen and said one simple yet complicated answer. We would like you to tell us a story. Flashback end. But the end result was pretty interesting that the botanist and psychologist started to become friends, with one hell of a rough start. To make up to the Pams on what she did, Harley told them a story about her past that was equally emotional to the death of Isley slash Ivy's mother. Isley slash Ivy did promise though that they won't tell Naruto what they learned on that story since it was Harley's to do so when she is comfortable in talking about it. Naruto was told of what happened in that session and he apologized to both Pams on his mistake in hopes that Harley could get through to them easily. They forgave him but in return for what he had done, they requested for Naruto to bring more flowers and all of the plants from their apartment to make it more homey. Not only that but needed one hell of a make-out session to satisfy sustate their urges for the time being. Suffice to say Harley ended up being the sole audience member to see how frisky both Pams got to be. Poor in turn had to run out of the room with an embarrassed blush that got the meta to laugh inside of their head. Anyways. After that whole debacle, Pam had urged the two to at least spend time together out of the office so they could at least relax and get their relationship better than before with the whole doctor slash doctor slash patient thing. They complied and had hung out a few times when they were available as per Pam's request. Naruto only learned a small amount about her during each of their times together from Harley being a fan of some of the writers under Naruto's employ, having a gymnastics scholarship to Gotham State University as a teenager and that she was a shy child when growing up. Currently, Naruto was hoping he could learn more about the blonde intern since he had today off alone with the next few days. As for Harley, today was the only day she had off for the week until who knows when. So, Naruto wanted to use this time to the fullest. So, what would like to get Harley? Naruto asked as she browsed through the menu. A turkey club wrap with fries and a vanilla shake. She answered. You? A Philly cheese steak sandwich with onion rings. A waiter came on by once seeing the other person of the party finally showed up and took their orders before doing his other tasks. While waiting for their meals to arrive, they had small talk on things as of late. Of course, there is Selena's trial tomorrow that I plan to go to. Yes, I've heard about her exploits and it's quite interesting on how a thief could end up saving a city with some help. Harley said as she took a sip of her drink. Well life sometimes enjoy making some interesting scenarios that will surprise others. Naruto replied back getting her to smile a little in agreement. Point. Once emptying his glass, Naruto had something to say. So I've been wondering Harley, you know quite a lot about Pam from what I've told you and you know me more than I know of you. And you are wondering what you can learn what you don't know about little little old me then. The intern said to finish up the publisher's statement. If you don't mind sharing. He offered the suggestion to her. 
She was about to answer when the waiter came back with their completed meals along with refilling their glasses. Well, this looks delicious. Harley said as she munched on a few fries dipped in the milkshake before seeing Naruto giving her a look. Aren't you forgetting something? He asked with a smirk. Oh yeah. Momentarily forgot. Stomach was stronger than the mind for a moment. Harley said with a giggle that made her sound cute. It's fine Harley and I have the same problem when it came to my childhood comfort food. He confessed. Oh, and what is that exactly? Ramen. Ramen? She asked since that was not a food item, she would expect a kid to have at that age to be his favorite. Naruto munched a bit into his food before replying to her. Back in my hometown, I was an orphan living in a rundown apartment with an allowance I got from the old man that checked up on me from time to time. Sorry to hear about that. Don't be. The silver-haired male said as he waved her off. With me being an outcast due to my looks, I wasn't allowed to eat at certain places and shop at certain stores. So, I ended up finding this one ramen stand one day and I became friends with the owner and his daughter. Harley could see the nostalgia run past his eyes and could tell that this part of his past truly meant something to him. They were so kind to me and gave me the first bowl of ramen to me free. I never had the stuff before so I was hesitant to try it but my stomach was demanding me to consume. After my first bite. Man it felt like something was missing all my life and I practically devoured that dish without taking a breathe. Naruto stated as he was practically drooling at the memory getting the blonde woman to laugh this time on the display. Naruto soon realized his current action and wiped off the drool with a napkin be before continuing. Ever since I was practically hooked on the stuff and spent much of my food money there. I sense a butt coming. She said getting him to nod. But it's been 10 years since I had their food and whatever ramen I eat every now and then doesn't hold a candle to their recipe. Got to the point that I eat ramen every now and then. Well, it's good to learn about that from you Naruto. Good to know. He said as he munched into his food for a bit before replying back to her again. Also, I'm still waiting for getting some info out of you document. Drat. She said in a childish tone in hopes he would have forgotten it. Sai might as well tell you then. Once taking a sip from her glass, she started to talk. I believe I haven't told you why I became a psychologist in the first place. I think you haven't and it would be nice to know your motivation. It starts out with my family as like most people have in their career choices if they wanted to follow into family legacies or suggestions. For me it was something different. You see I didn't have much of a good childhood that things were not that great when growing up. Had a harsh yet forgiving mother that tried to make things right for the family despite some naggings every so often. A younger brother that is a deadbeat and FYI he currently is still one while living with dear old mom. As for my dad, let's just say that I have bad history with him and his tendencies of being a con man. Sorry to hear that about your family Harley. I hope things got better when you moved out. The hazel-eyed male said to her. Oh, it did. Reason why I worked my ass off to get that gymnastic scholarship back in high school and skipped a grade or two so I can get out sooner. Impressive. He kept munching on his meal as he listened to her tale. For years while living under the same roof, I wondered what made my family tick, tick and wanted to understand all of their reasonings to the best of my knowledge. It takes a while to fully understand a person until something pops up causing you to rethink about the person more and more. It's pretty much what drives me now and to really push me to my limits and beyond that was for me working at Arkham to understand the real crazies there. Well, it'll be one hell of a challenge for you to accomplish since it won't be an easy task to handle. I know but I enjoy challenges and it makes it more rewarding in the end. After that, the two continued with their meals and had small talks before they decided to go around Gotham and see what else they can do to spend the rest of the day. They ended up seeing a movie to get some laughs out of it while Harley kept psychoanalyzing the characters after the film was over. Eventually, it was time for them to head back home since they had a big day in their own respective ways. You know you didn't have to walk me back to my car Naruto. 
I can defend myself quite well just so you know. I know Harley, but then I wouldn't be such an overprotective friend now could I? He said getting her to stop in her tracks and look at him in surprise. Why you consider me, your friend? She said with widened eyes. Well yeah, why wouldn't I be your friend Harley? W.L. I don't know. The intern said as she rubbed her arm. It's just that I never really had that many friends. Period. Pam and now you consider me your friend and it feels. Nice. Naruto smiled as he held her close from the side getting her to blush without him knowing from the contact. Even helped when she tried to cover her face more with her scarf. Then I'm glad to be one of your first friends Harley and I hope I don't ruin it later on. She smiled at this and hugged him back before they got to Harley's car. After saying one last goodbye, they went on their separate ways with the day being a pleasant part of their lives. Next day, Gotham City Courthouse. Bam the judge's mallet sounded out in the courtroom as the verdict was being ma made. Selina was currently in the best civilian where she had, not too gaudy or showy, but just something appropriate for the proceeding. Naruto and Shizun were sitting behind her for support for whatever verdict is placed upon her. Other people in the courtroom were consisted of animal rights activists and environmentalists. Selina Kyle, you have plead guilty to the charges set against you as Catwoman. The judge said to the raven-haired woman. And you understand that you can serve up to 25 years in prison? Yes, your honor. The environmentalist said. Regardless to the fact that you have committed these acts for the benefit of animal rights and wildlife. The lady judge said as she adjusted her glasses. Theft is still theft. Of course, your honor. However, you did help save Gotham City from annihilation from a terrorist plot and District Attorney Dent had recommended a plea bargain. The lady judge brought out when pointing to Harvey Dent who was helping out on the case on behalf of his friend Naruto. I have decided to sentence you five years of a probationary period. This got the courtroom occupants to cry out in joy, for some reason, when hearing the verdict. Selina looked back to her two friends with a wide smile while getting the same reaction towards her. Bam 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 I'm not finished yet people. The lady judge called out to settle down the proceeding. She looked around the room to see if anyone else was going to cause a fuss before she continued. Now I'm warning you Miss Kyle, if you ever don your Catwoman costume again to violate the law, then I'll not only revoke your probation, but I'll throw the book at you and give you the full sentence up to 25 years in prison. I understand Madam Judge. Selena said as she composed herself in front of her. You may go now Miss Kyle. The lady judge said getting the court meeting to end and getting the occupants to slowly disperse from the room. Thank you for helping me out on this Mr. Dent. Selena said as she turned towards the DA who just gave her a reassuring smile. Hey don't sweat it Ms. Kyle. You should be thanking Naruto for me seeing your case. It would have come up on my desk eventually but he made me go search for it sooner than later. The man said getting the environmentalist to smile towards her silverette friend. I think I will, but still thanks. The raven-haired woman said getting the DA to nod as he started packing up his things for the next stops for his day. Selina was then greeted by a smiling Shizun and Naruto, with the later holding her coat during the proceedings. The raven-haired woman took it from him and placed it on as they made their way out of the courthouse only to be assaulted by various reporters on the issue but Selina didn't want to say a thing at all. She was tired and just wanted to get back home and see her precious Isis after so long. Selina's in Shizun's loft. Oh Naruto, Shizun, I can't believe I'm finally free. Selina said as she walked through the door of her loft. It felt great for her to be back as she went into her bedroom and laid on top of its soft sheets and comfy mattress before rolling off to the side to look underneath the furniture. She ended up doing this throughout the loft as she was indeed looking for something or someone. Huh, she's not here. The environmentalist said to herself before calling out to her two friends. What are you looking for Selina? Asked the Uzumaki. Why Isis of course. 
I don't see her here at all. Maybe she's in your loft, Naruto. She said as she made her way to the door. Selina, there's something we need to tell you. Shizen said in a tone that didn't sound all that good to her roommate. She stopped in her tracks as she looked at the two and something started to click as her features started to show worry. Guys, where is Isis? Where is my cat? We don't know Selina. Naruto said, getting her attention. I got back home from work when I saw my patio door opened with Isis claw marks. I assumed she went into your loft and went down there, but... She didn't show up in here either when he stopped on by. Shizen picked up where Naruto left off. I, I am afraid she left to find you Selina. B but how could you let this happen? She yelled out at them before she had to sit down and grabbed a picture of her with Isis when she was just a little kitten. We're sorry Selina and we looked everywhere for her when we could. We even checked out the animal shelters if she turned up there but there was no such luck. Naruto said as his friend hugged the picture frame to her chest for a few moments before she got up and went into her bedroom to open up the closet. What are you doing? Shizun asked. What does it look like? I'm going out there so I can go find my baby. Selina said with determination in. Not alone you're not Selina. Naruto said to her, momentarily gaining her attention. This is mostly my fault to begin with on not properly having the door secured after the several times she left. She was about to say something but Shizun added into the conversation. Besides, you need a friend with you and we don't know how long you'll be out. I would go with you but I'll stay here just in case of anything. Whether it's Isis coming back or of me calling the animal shelters again. Sigh alright and thanks on this you too. Selina said as she closed the door to finish getting changed. When she got back out, she was in a pair of je jeans with the bottoms rolled up a bit to show thick wool on the inside of the pants. She also wore a purple, turtleneck sweater with a leather jacket, a scarf and brown boots. Well, let's get going then. The environmentalist said as Naruto opened the loft door for her. Good luck. Shizen said to them as they walked out of the door. Hours later. Time passed for the two friends as they had been walking around Gotham in the various districts showing pictures of Isis on her own if anyone had spotted her. The same result had been going on with Naruto and Selina getting I'm sorry, never spotted her, or responses of the sort. They not wanting to interrupt the search, Naruto went over to a passing food stand and got food for the two so time wouldn't be wasted. Even with all that training I'd done in these past weeks, I can't seem to find Isis at all. Naruto thought as he looked at Selina in worry. And now she's paying for my little mistake. After getting Pam admitted to Arkham, the Silverette had been training again to improve his skills especially with the newfound scythe he ended up getting from Yggdrasil. From what Naruto had noticed during his fight against Ivy's plants, he started to access into other abilities that started to make things interesting on how they were done. From running faster, able to cut through certain things with ease to finally being able to clone himself for the first time in years. It felt so exciting for him to finally be able to do all that after so long that he couldn't wait to train again to maybe make up for what he had lost, lost since coming here. First part of his training was once again meditation since he wanted to check on a few things. Yggdrasil had done something to him while they were chatting on Pam's heart platform saying that he made the hazelite male have better access to the nature remnants inside of him with it being better stabilized. Naruto went back onto Pam's platform and tried to figure out what he could do exactly but with the knowledge he could possibly access nature chakra again after so long he decided to do his sage training again. Sure enough he saw improvements that he can somewhat tap into that ability again of drawing natural energy into himself. But with his expansive void inside of him and with what remnants there are, it would take a very long time for him to have a fraction of his old sage mode. But he got time and would come back to that concept at a later day. The scythe though was an interesting one that he had gotten from mix of his powers and from what Yggdrasil did to him. When he was training out in the woods on what he could do with it, he did indeed cut through trees and rocks with a single swing. But of course the silverette apologized to the trees he had slaughtered. 
Naruto maneuvered through the forest with his scythe on hand and seemed to get a bit faster than moments prior. When he stopped, he saw some light flower petals falling behind him and confused the silver it more until thinking it was an odd perk his scythe gave out. In the end, Naruto thought of giving his weapons names at some point once he had a better idea on what they can fully do. So, with his scythe, he decided to give it the name Lunar Rose because it had the appearance of a plucked flower and the blade seemed to glow a little at night that reminded him of the moon. The second part of his training was with the most of his current skill set. Sure, his silence and memory abilities stayed the same with no real changes, changes along with his other abilities. But Naruto realized that his physical attributes seemed better than before from his strength, speed and agility. When he had been doing his salmon ladder workout, it seemed that he wasn't really breaking a sweat at all with how easy he was doing the whole process. His agility and speed improved greatly when he was doing his mid-air tricks late at night that could possibly make any acrobat truly green with envy if they saw him. The next bit of his training was focusing primarily on his speed as he had wondered how fast he could really go now. He went to a vacant racetrack so he could time himself on his speed and figure out how much of a difference there were between each of the laps. It was quite interesting when he was starting to gain speed with such a rush that the former shinobi didn't realize he ended up running into a tree. Sure, it felt really, really bad when he made the impact and he swore he heard some animals and trees mockingly laugh at him. He didn't know how that happened but he made a clone to watch what he did moments prior. Naruto ended up in the same situation as before with those same laughs aimed towards him but this time he got the answer he wanted. It turned out that Naruto gained more speed than he realized that he was on one part of the track and ended up teleporting or warping to the other side with him not getting better footing thus him crashing into the tree. The publishers soon guessed he would have been able to find the equivalent to his old body flicker technique to some extent or further than that. Who knows on what that warping ability of his was capable of to its full extent. Lastly, he wanted to hopefully improve more on his presence sensing and clone abilities. He was pretty excited that he can clone himself again and hopefully could try to make more than one to maybe get some stuff done if needed. But the ability is quite fresh that his limit so far is just one and just like his original shadow clone technique will, will split the person's reserves to make it, which he doesn't have that much apparently. With the sensing one, it took some time trying to get a better hang of it that instead of pinpointing generalized people in a room that now he can somewhat pinpoint to a rough location in one. Granted it still has come kinks to rough out but the silverette wished he could have mastered this when trying to find Isis. I hope Isis is okay on her own. Selina said getting the former shinobi out of his thoughts with him catching the last part she said. She probably is doing fine Selina. I'm certain you did a lot in teaching her how to do certain tasks. I bet she swiped a big fish from a vendor and ate it all up while sneaking into some warm place to sleep at night. Naruto suggested getting her to smile slightly. You're probably right. I did teach her quite a lot, though I regret teaching her how to open certain doors now. She said as they ended up at one ally where she pulled out her cat whistle and blew with no results. She just misses you, that's all. Don't blame yourself on what happened. Sigh, I know Naruto. She said before a rush of cold wind came at her, making her shiver. In response, Naruto wrapped his arm around her and brought her close to possibly get her warm. Realizing what he did, he let go a bit as he looked away. Sorry, didn't mean to do that. He said with a slight blush from both the cold air and from slight embarrassment. And no it's quite alright. Selina said with a light blush on her features. Why you can hold me close if you want. It's colder than I expected it to be. I if you say so. Naruto said as he hesitantly wrapped his arm around her to keep her close for warmth as they kept on walking. Why am I feeling this way? The raven-haired beauty thought as her eyes drifted to the handsome publisher. He's being a worried friend wanting to help me out is all but why is my chest pounding a little harder? Miyamiyare cat called out getting the two friends' attention as they neared an alleyway. Ice? Isis? Selina hopefully asked as she went into the alleyway in front of Naruto, only to see two cats facing against each other with a half-eaten fish in between them. The two soon turned towards the raven-haired woman and hissed at her. 
Hey, don't worry. We're friends. She said when she pulled out cat treats out of her coat pocket. When did you have time to get those? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. He never saw her grab those in her kitchen or from any shop they passed on by. You. Shu. Selena said to him before turning back to the cats and placed the food in front of them. They ate it with gusto getting Selena to squat down and start petting them. Deciding to not feel left out, Naruto did the same action causing the two cats to enjoy the nice sensations. The little enjoyment was interrupted when a van started pulling into the alleyway, causing Selena to pull Naruto into a connecting corridor because of an old habit with her burglary jobs. She looked back to see who came in before looking back to Naruto with him with a slight blush on his face. The raven-haired beauty was confused before noticing their current placement of them very close together. Their legs were separated and were settled in between each other having their pelvises practically touching. Her hands were settled on his strong, firm chest with their faces being somewhat close that got her better details on his eyes. Have they always been that bright? She thought as she kept looking at his powerful, yet gentle gaze. It's like looking into the eyes of a strong lion, Selena Focus. Her eyes, they look beautiful like deep, pretty jade jewels. He thought as he tried to focus anywhere but the other parts of the body right now that are touching Selena. Fleabags. A woman's voice called out interrupting the two friends' thoughts. Thoughts. Dirty rotten, stinking fleabags. Get them punch. The two looked to where the voice was coming from and saw a woman in a blue, winter's outfit with a large man in a brown one and they were trying to nab the cats in a mistreated fashion. Come to mama you stinking furball. The woman said as she got the net on the one feline cowering in the corner. Okay that's it. Both friends unknowingly thought the same thing as they moved from their placement, with slight difficulty, before they moved in front of the pair of people nabbing the cats. Just what the hell do you think you're doing? Selena said as she stomped on the handle of the net. Catching strays. The woman said with a sneer. What's it to ya? Obviously you two aren't with any animal shelters since they have a better approach at this. Naruto said getting Selena to nod at the fact. So then why are you after these cats? The woman pushed the raven-haired environmentalist away as she growled back. None of your business. So, piss off. Fine. Naruto said as he grabbed the net from the man's grasp. But we're taking these guys with us. Hey! The man yelled out as he tried to grab Naruto, only to be met by the end of his boot when being kicked away to the other side of the alleyway. Selena somewhat did the same thing when the woman tried to hit her but the environmentalist had grabbed her wrist and brought it behind the person's back. We'll ask again, why are you after these cats? Selena growled out. Gah! Let go you stupid bitch! The woman yelled out before turning to her partner. Paunch! Do something you idiot! The man shakily got up as he ran towards the two friends, only to be met by his toss partner as they ended up hitting the nearby trash cans. They shook out of their stupor and kicked the trash cans to the two friends friends as they fell over. Ponch then got up and picked up another trash can to hit the friends with it, only to be hit with a batarang instead. Ponch? The woman questioned as she ended up inside of a trash can, courtesy of the Batman. Hey! You can't do this to me! She yelled out as Selena hit the can from the side to disorient the woman. Oh, put a lid on it would ya? Selena said getting the woman to scramble away, only to hit the alley wall instead to end up falling over. You know, Batman said getting the two friends' attention, you are supposed to stay out of trouble Miss Kyle. Well, it wasn't her fault Batman since those two are at fault for mistreating the stray cats. Naruto pointed out before Selena spoke up. If you've been following me to be my parole officer, how often do you want me to check in? She said only to hear a police car pull up onto the scene with their sirens going off. The two friends looked to the source and when looking back they saw the dark night had disappeared. Ass. Should have stayed to help explain things. 
Naruto muttered as a pair of cops came up to them. All right. Mind explaining what's going on here? The officer said to the two. She was of Hispanic origin with her tan skin with black eyes and her long hair tied in the back. The other officer's features were covered with his back turned as he was struggling to get the trash can off of the woman's body. Sorry about this officer. Naruto said in wanting to know their names. Right. Names Officer Montoya and my partner is Officer Uchiha. Montoya said as she pointed out her partner. Uchiha? Naruto thought as he looked to the side to see the person struggling to get the metallic can off. Ha, huh, and Uchiha in law enforcement. Well, there is that similarity from back home. Not. The woman soon got free from her confinement before pointing to the two friends. Those two jumped us. I want to press charges. They were, they were stealing cats. Selena called out on their action. Stealing from who exactly you dumb broad? They don't belong to anybody. The woman said as she went up to her partner and got him up. We were just rounding them up and get them to the nearest shelter when they attacked us. I call bullshit. Naruto said to the two. You guys were mistreating them from what we saw. If they worked for any shelter, they would have done a better job handling them if what those two are speaking is true. The Uchiha spoke out getting Naruto to look at him now and saw that it was this world Sasuke. He appeared to be in his early twenties with his hair cut short or had all his duck-butted hairstyle tucked away into his officer hat. Hope this one isn't an avenging, broadening asshole like back home. If he isn't then I'll be fine with him. The Uzumaki thought as he was looking at this world's counterpart of his old friend. Still though, we should bring the lot downtown. Montoya said as she pulled out several handcuffs. Downtown? Selena questioned with slight worry in her voice. Please come along quietly and things will run smoothly if you do. Sasuke said as he placed the handcuffs on the two thuggish people. Selena do as they say, it'll indeed be better if we don't resist. Naruto suggested to his friend getting her to sag her shoulders. Sigh okay. She muttered as Montoya placed the handcuffs on her. The group was then led to the police vehicle, which was a van and the lot was escorted inside of it for transport to the station. Sasuke had radioed in for a tow truck so it can be taken to the station as well. Later, GCPD. The doors were opened onto the darkened entrance as Naruto and Selena walked out of the precinct. Man, I thought we'd never leave. Naruto said as he rotated his shoulder with it, that feeling locked while being in that cell with Selena. I agree. She replied back only to be greeted with Shizun with her coat. Shizun. Were you the one that bailed us out? She asked her roommate getting her to shake her head before pointing to the car with a man standing in front of it. Naruto recognized the man as Alfred so that means. Seems that Bruce got us out of this jam. Naruto said as he walked Selena to the car. You coming Shizun? Now I have some errands to run before heading back to the loft. She said getting the publisher and environmentalist to nod as they kept walking to Bruce's car. Hey Alfred, how's it going? The Silverette said as he greeted his employee's boyfriend. Doing quite well Mr. Uzumaki. The Englishman replied back. It's good to see you in better moods since I last saw you. Thanks, I appreciate it. The Silverette responded as he opened the car door and ushered Selena inside. Once both were in, Alfred got into the driver's seat and went off. Thanks for doing this for us Bruce. I'll pay you back in full on the bail money. Naruto said as he greeted his friend. That won't be necessary Naruto. Bruce said as he tried to wave off the offer. But I insist. Sigh all right. I gotta thank you as well Bruce. Your bail money went into good hands. Selena said to the dark haired man. But that's not important Selena. You are. He said as he placed his hand on hers getting her to jerk it back a little. 
Bruce saw this and felt worried if he did anything bad. Bruce. I like you a lot. But only as a friend. She said as she tried to settle things down. I hope you understand and I'm sorry if dash. I understand completely. Bruce said as he held up his hand to calm his friend down. Though he seemed a little sad that a potential love interest settled that line but it was probably for the best. Then, as a friend. I want to say that this arrest will make it look bad on your probation. Probation. I agree and even on the very day you had your court hearing that this will wave a big red flag over your head. Added in the publisher. But I'll worry about that after I find my cat. Selena said getting Naruto to tell Bruce what happened with her pet cat making the dark-haired man to nod on the details. But one thing that is bugging me is why those creeps from that alleyway working for a big shot as a lawyer from Daggett Labs bailed them out. She questioned on that bit. Hell, the guy came in too quickly to the station and got them out within an hour while the two of us spent time in that cell. The silver-haired male said getting Selena to grunt in agreement. Roland Daggett is a dangerous man. You should be very careful when dealing with him. I know and I'll be sure to not be anywhere near him. The raven-haired beauty said with a small glint in his eyes getting Naruto to notice this. Before wanting to jump to anything, the Silverette will need to track down Karama again and find out what Roland Daggett is up to. Undisclosed location. So how's the job going? Karama asked as he had the intercom speaker on when talking to one of his employees. Copperhead was not too far off from her boss slash boyfriend as she was getting things organized in the room. Sometimes she hates it when they switch to so many locations at a time. I gotta say 99, grh.9% done. Son of a bitch. The man said on the other end. Give me a moment. Running could be heard on the line before gunshots were going off before the man grunted like he threw something onto a burning pyre of sort indicated with the faint fire sounds in the background. Okay 100% done now. Good then I need to talk to you about the guests that are arriving tomorrow. Karama said to the man. Are they hookers? No. And like that, you lost me. He replied back getting the red-headed hybrid to rub his eyes. They are our financial suppliers. Even though we do well on most of our other businesses, it doesn't come cheap on what our other operations entail. Good God, they must really hate us. Yes. Yes, yes they do. A reason why they cancelled our budget. Karama said with a twitch to his eye. All because of you. Oh, that's bad. The man said. Copperhead we need that right? Yes, we do. Replied the assassin. Thank you, Copperhead. You're welcome. She said as she went back to her organizing. Look, over the past few years, we've had some expensive claims. Like what? First off, the property damage we had to try to keep hidden from the public and most governments. Ah, good times. Spending about $20,000 for Candy Dot, and that's candy with an eye by the way. Yeah, she really loved my treats, the man said with a slight giggle. Hope Cobblepot isn't still too pissed on that. Somewhat, with him out of his most reliable secretary for nine months or so. The hybrid added in, before pausing. Then there's the fact of you painted some of our cars red and scrapped them. What? I wanted to see if they were better red instead of black. Even with the Hitler mobile. Oh please, the man had enough blood on his hands. Why not have most of said blood in question on his car? Even with goat's blood and rammed it to a Dairy Queen. And I was hungry and drunk off my ass at the time. There's also the killing of at least a dozen innocent people. Anthony Hopkins did that and got a fucking Oscar for that. The sexual harassment. I'm not apologizing for that. I know this is asking a lot from one of my top field operatives, but... But... I need you to stay in your quarters until they're all gone. 
Karama said, as he tried to control his breathing with how annoying his employee is at times. I get the distinct impression that you're embarrassed of me. No shit. Then I'm going to go with no. This is, this is important, Karama sighed, and I don't need you to cause another scene. And I don't have to take this. I can just go for a walk till this all blows over. Oh no you don't you asshole. Karama snapped, since his man's one annoying habit was that he causes problems wherever he goes when he goes out for his walks. A total bitch to clean up by the way. And who's going to stop me? The man questioned. Oh, how about Michael MC doesn't exist? How about me when I literally find you on my own and rip your head off your shoulders? Karama snarled, ignoring his copperhead came up from behind him and started to massage his shoulders to calm him down. And I'll reattach it back, in time. Sai, what do you want? What? What do I need to give you to stay in your quarters for the duration of the meeting? Well, I need a few new guns for my collection. The man said to his boss. Oh, and I need a cannon. Bitches love cannons, if you know what I'm saying. Karama took a deep breath and exhaled, keeping calm as Copperhead kept working her magic on his shoulders. What else? I would like to have Anko Dash. Do I need to remind you the last time you requested her to touch your privates? Karama said with a small smirk on his face on remembering that, very enjoyable experience. No. Then is there anything else? I would like one of those new widescreen TVs with the latest video games in the market right now. It'll keep me occupied to God knows when. He said before continuing. Other than that, I've nothing else that comes to mind. Then I expect Dash. Oh, and I need a truckload of chimichangas ready for my consumption with the latest porn there is. Fine. Then I expect you to show up early tomorrow on time. Will do. Bye he said as he ended the call. Sometimes I want to fucking kill him and be done with it. Karama said as he leaned back in his chair and massaged his forehead. Then we'll be down one of our profitable assets. I know. I know and don't care right now. We have others that can pick up the slack. He said as he downed the bottle of alcohol on his desk. Why didn't he hire Lawton or Wilson into his group? Either one of them would have done a better job but knew, he decided to hire the Terminator's crazy cousin with a mouth that won't fucking shut up. The guy's good and all but fucking hell he causes problems whenever he goes. Hey honey. Naruto Uzumaki is here to see ya. Sai send him an anko. Will do. She said in a happy tone. So, Naruto what's the progress on that book? Will you just stop? Karama's former container said as the intercom went dead. Wonder what he is here this time for? Copperhead asked as her lover shrugged his shoulders. Soon Naruto walked through the doors with a twitch to his eye as Anko waved at him from her desk. Sometimes I wonder how you put up with her. The silver-haired male said as he closed the door. I don't. I just let things roll and I get some fun action afterwards. The redhead said as he looked at the publisher with an annoyed look on his face. You look like shit. Well, I was in a prison cell for a few hours. At least it's better than the blood prison. The crime lord pointed out. True. Naruto said to his former tenant. At least I had some company. Oh did someone in there decide to make you his bitch? Fuck your asshole. Once again, do I need to remind you that I don't swing that way? Karama said with a cheeky grin. Having fun on the former shinobi will help brighten his mood a bit after the call from earlier. No, I was with Selena you furball. Naruto said in a comedic yell at the man. Then how was it with the prison romp with her? Naruto's eyes were starting to twitch badly as he wanted to kill the bijou turned human and didn't care if Anko and Claudia gets upset about it. Look, can I at least get some information from you and I'll be on my way? Sure, why not? 
had my fill of your joking misery right now. The crime boss said as he looked at, at the publisher. Taking a deep breath so he can calm down the slightly boiling anger in his system before he spoke. Is there anything new as of late with Roland Daggett and his company? Daggett, huh? Claudia, do you know anything with the man as of late? Well, from what I've heard was that he has had his pharmaceutical company is coming out with a hot new drug. An antitoxin, apparently. What's so special about that? Naruto wondered as Claudia rubbed her head on that. Don't know for sure. The guy has had a tight lid on it and had his best scientists working on it. She replied back. Sadly, none of our agents in his company haven't been able to find out what it is for. From what I can tell, it's quite suspicious and I want to find out what. Thank you for the information and have a good one. Naruto said as he started to leave Kurama's office. We'll have fun storming the castle. The hybrid added in before Naruto left. Should have stayed longer and had a nice chat with me. I think you probably wore out his patience the last time you chatted with him when dealing with Red Claw. True. So, is he going to be fine? Copperhead asked her lover. I said I'm not working on that book Anko. Naruto's voice rang out from the other side of the door. Yeah, he'll be fine. Batman will probably show up to investigate or whatever. The man said as he went back to other businesses for the day. Outside of Gotham, Daggett Labs. Good God, is it cold or what? One security guard asked his partner. How cold do you think it is? I bet it's below freezing, right? Highly doubt it, but there's, well, ice. The other guard replied as he gestured the ice-covered pavement with lots of rock salt on it. Patrolling in the ice and snow. Give me a fucking break. Guard one said. Do you know who doesn't go out on patrol this late in the day? I'm sure you'll tell me. Guard two said with a droll in his voice at his partner's rant. Jenkins, I bet the asshole is sitting in his comfy chair in the nice and warm monitor room. Well, that's him I guess. God sometimes his partner doesn't stop bitching and moaning about the guy. He walked off the side to get away from him when something hoisted him up. I mean seriously. I've been doing monitor duty for eight weeks straight and when he complains to the boss that I'm not pulling my fair share of work I end up in this while he gets to enjoy and relax inside without the cold, winter air. So here I am doing this thing here with. You. The first guard brought up his gun and searched for where his partner went to as he spoke out. Hey Murphy, where you go man? Quit hiding around since it's not funny. In here. I thought I heard something. Murphy said getting the security guard to the man's location. What did you hear exactly? A stray cat or something? The guard asked as he walked into the empty storage space. Yeah, you can say something like that. A voice said as it changed from a man to a woman before knocking the guard out. Cough, God, I hate doing that. She said as she rubbed her throat to make it feel better. One of the least favorite tricks I learned at the circus tends to wreck the vocal cords. Once moving the body to a better hiding place so she can proceed with finding what is going on. After being dropped off by Bruce Wayne, Selina made it to her loft and quickly nabbed her Catwoman attire before getting to her car and drove to her hideaway that is near the labs. Once there, she changed and headed out to the place where she had to take care of some guards before proceeding further. Honestly it was quite easy making it through with the security being a tad lax, especially after she made quick work with the one security guard in the monitor room. It took, took a bit to navigate from checking room to room where they were keeping the stray animals but she eventually found it. Oh god, these poor animals. Selena said at the sight of them being in cages. Their appearances weren't looking so good. What the hell were they doing to you all? Meow meow. She recognized that cry anywhere as Catwoman turned around to find. Isis. Selina called out in worry as she got closer to her beloved pet before opening up the cage. Oh my sweet baby. 
What did they do to you my precious? All of a sudden Isis seemed to go nuts as she fussed and hissed at her master. Before Selina knew it, her beloved Isis bit into her hand where the costume had the least fabric. Ow! She yelled out dropping her cat as she held her hand. Isis then ran off as she went through the other door to the room. Soon the other animals in the room woke up and started making a fuss with some showing they had something similar to rabies and other problems. Well look what the cat dragged in. Catwoman turned around to see the two people from the alleyway from earlier with one other person with a bob haircut. Wow, that's one nasty cut you got there pussycat. The bob haircut man said sarcastically. Aren't you going to lick it better? What did you do to these animals? Selena demandingly asked. Nothing compared to what we are gonna do to you pussycat. The woman said as the three started walking towards her. Not wanting to be caught. Selena pulled out her whip and had it clung onto a rolling table filled with chemicals and pulled to make it fall and make smoke. Using the distraction, she left through the other doorway where Isis went through. Let's cough skin that cat. The woman called out as she walked forward to the doorway. No Jesse. We got other priorities to attend to. The bob hair cut man said to the two. What do you mean Dr. Milo? If you, if you two yahoos didn't notice, but she had been bitten. The now identified Dr. Milo pointed out. She can run away from us all she likes, but she can't run away from that toxin. Oh yeah. Guess you're right. She said before laughing a little. Back with Selena, she had been chasing after Isis for a bit where she ended up on the lab's rooftop. Once making it past the doorway, she saw her beloved cat standing on the ledge. Isis. Wait. Selena called out only to have a hiss as a response before the black cat leapt off of the building. She made to the edge and looked down to see where Isis went until her vision started to go a little foggy. The environmentalist soon lifted up her goggles so the fogginess won't block her vision but apparently it wasn't the goggles at all since it was her eyes. Am my head. She said as his head started to feel like it was spinning. Not wanting to jump off like she normally would, she pulled out her whip and had lit latch onto part of the building's exterior before swinging down. She tried to jump but slipped due to the snow and ended up falling down to the ground hard with her whip coming with her due to the bad support. She got up and started to run after her previous cat into the woods as her body wasn't feeling all that great now. It didn't matter as she needed to have her Isis back in her arms. Isis. Please stop. Selena called out to her. Miar, Isis called out and hissed at her before running further away from her master. The raven-haired beauty kept on running, while staggering as her world started to spin. She was feeling too warm for comfort as she pulled the mask back to reveal her face to the cold world before her with sweat dripping from her brow. Even that wasn't enough as she had to unzip the front of her suit halfway so the cold air could help on her heat. Oh! Oh God, WH what's happening to me? She said as she was starting to feel out of breath now. She kept on staggering forward with Isis barely leaving her sights before she hit a wooden fence and flipped over into the snow. Her will starting to get weak as she tried to stand up and keep walking until she collapsed onto the road. Soon a car started to come close causing the raven-haired woman to feel paler than she already was in fright thinking she might die now. It stopped in front of her but through her perspective it seemed to get closer through hallucination. She started to crawl back in fright as something got out of the car and came towards her with another being coming up not too far from him. PL please s stay away. Selena cried out in tears from the mixture of pain and fear running through her system as the person grabbed a hold of her. Selena. It's me Naruto. A man called out getting Selena to focus her eyes to see her silverette friend holding onto her. And Naruto. She weakly said as she soon saw Batman behind him. Batman too? Yeah, he ended up following me since I had a feeling you were coming over here. Naruto said as he put his hand to her forehead. You're extremely hot Selena. He said in worry as Batman got a similar reaction. 
he 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 so are you. She said clearly not in her right mind now. We need to get you to the hospital. You can't. Daggett will have me arrested if I do. She said as she was in tears that made Naruto's heart ache when seeing it. Then what should we do then? Batman asked her. I, I have a hideaway not far from here. By the lake. It's in T the cat statue. The two men nodded as Naruto carried her to his car where Batman opened up the back seat so they can lay her down till they get to her hideout. Selena's hideaway. Why you know? Why you haven't T told me why you decided to come after me Batman? Selena said as she was laid out on a small bed with a window be behind her for view of the lake. Don't tell me you're starting to go all soft for us criminals now. Clearly you're delusional. He said as Naruto drained a wet cloth to dampen her head. Clearly the escape artist I see. She said as she coughed a little into her injured hand. Selena. What's this? The hazelite man said as he took her hand. Isis. As she bit me. She wasn't in her right mind. The raven-haired woman said. She wasn't while I swear and so are all of the other animals. Those people did something to them. Don't worry Selena. We'll take care of them I promise. Naruto said as he looked at Batman for confirmation on this. Same here. He said as he stood up from his position. Once Selina heard this, she leaned back and closed her eyes to try and rest. Don't worry Batman, I'll stay here and watch her condition. You go find out what Daggett is planning. That's the plan Mr. Uzumaki. The caped crusader said as he started to walk out. I'll also find an antidote when I'm there. They might have one if they are really behind this. Then good luck. Naruto said back as the hero left leaving the two friends alone in the one room. With a bit of time passing, Naruto kept on changing the water to help clean off Selena's sweat with her breathing trying to go at a normal pace. Keyword trying. He'll be back Selena. Just give him a bit of time. Naruto said to help reassure her as she looked back at him with her eyes reddened from the pain and crying. How see can you be so as sure? She said with a slight stutter. Just a little bit of faith is all. He said to her. Besides, I trust him to help one of my precious friends after all. That's another thing, she interjected, why did you call me your precious friend? I know we are good friends, but why the addition to that? Naruto realized on what he said when she stated that and decided to explain. When I was barely a teenager, I came across a coastal town and I slept in the nearby forest since someone stole what money I had for my little trip so I couldn't afford to stay in a hotel for the night. It was morning when I was woken up by this one girl I thought was very pretty at the time since she didn't want me to catch a cold and I was sleeping on some plants she was gathering for medicine. Naruto said with some altered information as he remembered his time at Wave. Selena kept on listening onto the details as it seemed familiar to her but couldn't put it where exactly. We got to talk for a while, which I couldn't fully remember all of the details, but one thing stood out the most of her talking about precious people. She said that when someone has something or someone else important to protect with their lives, it makes them stronger than they already are. It seemed to click with me very well and I wanted to keep that notion with me for the rest of my life. I helped her out gather up what medical plants were around as payment before she left. He finished explaining to his friend as things started to come together. Why you had th that in your book, didn't you? She asked for confirmation. Yeah, I did. I based what I had experienced at the time for my book since I consider it very important to me. Sigh there are people that I have met that I consider good friends but others I have considered my most precious people in my life. Pam became someone truly precious to me with how much I love her and, while I consider you someone really precious to me as well. The publisher finished off as he scratched his face with a slight flush from the cold and admittance. So? Yeah? You had a crush on a boy, didn't you? She said with the straightest face she could muster at the moment. 
Seriously? That's all you got out of that? Naruto yelled out as he comedically pointed to her with an accusing finger. She couldn't hold it in any longer as she started to laugh hard with some coughs in between. Yeah, yeah, laugh it up Selena. He said with a pout as that was an embarrassing, an embarrassing moment for him as he did consider Haku very pretty but that came on crashing down when Haku admitted she was a boy. S sorry cough I needed that badly and I couldn't resist. Selena said to him as he looked back at her. Hey it's alright and I forgive you on that. But as seriously though. You consider M me one of your most precious people? She asked him. Most definitely. He answered with a smile that warmed her heart. With the time of him helping her out with that wildlife preserve, visiting her in prison and helping her get out of it, she truly considered all that to help back up that claim. Soon the two heard barking in the distance as Naruto peeked through the window on what is going on. He felt Selena shift in her bed so she can see what is going on making him hold her up for a better view. T thanks. She said as she turned towards the scene of Batman running across the frozen lake with a rabid dog chasing after him. The hero dodged to the side getting the dog to skid on the ice before it tried to get back up while the Dark Knight slowly walked so he wouldn't fall or start breaking the ice. The dog soon got up and lunged at the hero, causing him to fall and made their worries worse with the hero fighting the mad beast off. Oh no! Selena weakly yelled out as Naruto held onto her and rubbed her gently to calm her down. Soon the two saw people exit from a van parked a bit away from the lake and walk onto the ice with one of them aiming a gun at the hero. The two were soon confused with what went next as the dog got off of the hero and just wandered around a little before the one person started shooting at the ice around Batman. The ice soon crumbled as Batman fell into the icy water getting Selina to cling onto Naruto for support. For what seemed forever for the two only lasted for barely a minute as Batman Batman soon rose up from the icy water after taking care of those thugs. T thank god he made it. Selena muttered as she started to feel droopier than before. Same here and he'll be here soon to help. Just like I told you. Naruto said as he waited for her response. Selena. He looked at her and put his hand to her mouth and nostrils to feel if she was breathing. There hardly was any at all. No. No no no. Naruto yelled in panic as he laid her prone form onto the bed and checked her pulse as it was starting to go down. Acting fast, he started to perform CPR on her as he placed his hands on her chest and started pressing it down to hopefully get her breathing and heart back up. Not again. I can't let this happen again. The former shinobi thought as he was determined to bring her back long enough for Batman to arrive with a possible antidote. He placed his mouth on hers and blew into it before checking if she was breathing again. This action kept going on for Kami knows how long, which scared Naruto greatly. He didn't want to lose someone precious to him. He almost lost Pam the first time and he isn't going to let that happen to Selina. Just as all hope seemed lost, Selina took in a slight bit of breath before coughing a bit. Selina. Naruto said in relief as he hugged her. Don't scare me like that. W what do you mean? She asked as she soon peeked over her shoulder and saw Batman coming towards them. I got the antidote. It's a viral antitoxin and she just needs to breathe it in. He said as he came to the two. Naruto turned around to see the hero of Gotham with the antidote and nodded on the information. Okay then Selina, you're going to need to lay back down so your airways can be fully opened. Naruto said to her as she weakly nodded at the request. Soon she breathed in the viral antitoxin as the effects were slowly appearing with her skin going into its natural tone, her breathing getting back to normal and her no longer feeling hot. Not soon after, she started to fall asleep with how exhausted she is from today's events. It seems to be working. Naruto said in a hushed tone as he saw the caped crusader have a hint of a smile on his face. Then I need to get going and alert the authorities on what's going on. The hero said as he started to head out. You do that. I'll keep her here before I get her to her loft. The publisher said to the bat. 
need to be sure the antidote fully works out or if something is amiss. The Uzumaki looked back for a response only to hear the Batmobile's engines roaring into the cold night as it sped off to the GCPD and wherever else there is to do for the man's evening. As the sounds of the vehicle faded from the distance, Naruto turned his attention back to his friend and covered her back up with the blanket before wiping off any residual sweat so she won't get sick after she got better. Don't worry Selina, I'm here and everything will be fine. He said to her as he adjusted to his seat so he could properly rest as well from the long day the two had. Next day, Selina's and Shizun's loft. Well, it says here and on the news that people are calling you a hero Selina. Shizun said as she held up a copy of the Gotham Times with the headline of Batman and Catwoman Uncover Medical Scheme. Sooner or later, they might start making Catwoman dolls and Halloween costumes for little girls. Naruto added in as he came in from the kitchen with some hot tea for the three of them. Yesterday was quite crazy for the two friends with what happened. After the two woke up, with Selina feeling much better, they went out to get them themselves a hot breakfast at a nearby diner when they saw on the news that Batman uncovered a potential plot upon the city and that Catwoman assisted him. This at least got Selina to have a better public opinion from the Red Claw Plague event and now this. I know but I wish it could have been better on the results. Selina said as she took one of the cups. On the fact that Isis hasn't been found yet or that Daggett had gotten himself out of the hot mess. Naruto added in. It was stated on the news that Roland Daggett got away scot-free on the accusations with him stating that the people of the one lab were making the one virus without him knowing. It was to make it look like he was innocent in the whole situation with him disavowing all of the employees working at the area. So for now the man is being investigated on what is going on but the Silverette has a feeling that Daggett will rear his ugly head back one way or another. Both. She muttered as she opened up the patio door to get some fresh air and clear out the stuffiness of the loft. Are you sure you'll be okay? Shizen asked as she got up and headed towards the door. Yes, I'll be fine Shizun. The environmentalist said. You go out and enjoy your date with that teacher of a boyfriend of yours. I will. Irika and I had been wanting to go out for a while so this means a lot to us. The assistant said as she opened the door. And don't worry, she'll turn up eventually. I know she will. I hope you're right. Selina said as Shizun left for the day. She is right Selina, you just need to give it time. She'll turn up eventually and if not we can go out and keep searching for Isis. Naruto said to hopefully raise her spirits. But what if she doesn't come back? She responded back at him with sadness in her voice. What if she is, gone, and the virus? Naruto cut her off as he hugged her and he patted her head to hopefully calm her down more. Don't say that, Selina. She'll be fine and is a strong girl. You just need to have faith is all. Selina slightly smiled at this while in his embrace as she felt a tad better despite what has happened. Ever since last night, she didn't know what was going on if it was just the sickness or something else. But she started to feel truly safe while being near the silverette and her heart starts to beat a little faster whenever she is in his grasp or touching him. Unknowns to the two, a shadow appeared on the patio floor as a basket started to come on down from the floor above. The basket moved to show two green eyes poking out from the darkness of the sheet. It soon moved more and jumped out of its placement to land on top of the silver red head. The hell? Naruto said as a weight suddenly came upon his head. Selina looked up from the suddenness when she saw. Isis. She yelled out in joy as she took her beloved cat off of Naruto's head. Oh thank god you're alright Isis. I missed you so much. Selina said as she kept on kissing her precious baby and spinning around in joy. Naruto smiled at the interaction and couldn't help but be glad to see the two together again after so long. Hell he can see the happiness in their eyes shine brightly. But there was something that seemed to bug him now. How did she get here? And how did she get up high enough to jump on my head? Naruto asked getting Selina to pause in the action. Yeah, how did you get here Isis? 
she asked as her cat turned her head towards the basket on the patio floor. They soon saw the shadow move, causing the two friends to move to the entrance to see who did this. Their questions were soon answered, as heard some cloth ruffling, and soon, they saw Batman gliding away from the building. The two gained smiles on their faces and got closer to each other as Isis star started to loudly purr in their warmth. The warmth of a mother and the warmth of a comforting man. Chapter 11, Visiting the City of Tomorrow So glad the snow is starting to let up now. Naruto said to himself as he was driving down the freeway. It would have been a pain if the snow kept on going with all the ice. Naruto had been driving for a few hours now from Gotham City because of the snowstorm that hit last night. It was not a fun experience waking up to it and having to leave at a good time so the roads and traffic wouldn't be bad. When he stepped out of the towers, he saw the plow trucks were barely starting their jobs for the day, which pissed off the Uzumaki that his plans were going to be delayed. Naruto had called the hotel that he was going to be late from his desired check-in time and they understood since the storm hit them as well. He packed up a small lunch for the road since he could tell he would end up at his destination late in the afternoon instead of 10 or 11 in the morning. But as soon as he got onto the road, he was hearing radio reports of several accidents already happening due to the ice. So now the plans got delayed even further that he might end up at the hotel roughly 3 or 4 in the afternoon. One of the many things I despise in this world is the Kami Dam roads with its damned ice. He muttered as he was driving a tad slow with several other cars around him so that no accidents wouldn't occur. I just hope that this storm didn't dampen my plans too much. One might wonder why the publicist is on the road and of what the destination he has in store. Well it's quite simple really, he is killing two birds with one stone by going to Metropolis. He was called up by his New York branch to see if he can open up a new location in Metropolis so that things could get processed better with certain dealings. Naruto understood that possibly getting a major business, or even a minor one, would make leaps and bounds if a location was opened up in that city so he decided to give it a chance. Of course, he would need to go to the city in person so he could find a suitable building to open up the location at. While he is there, he might as well check up on a few places to see how things have changed since he last been there. Don't know if I should have taken a flight to get over there instead of driving. But knew, I didn't want to fly in a metal death trap. It would have been cheaper to drive. Naruto grumbled as he pulled out a sandwich and took a bite out of it. Should have listened to their advice and booked the damn flight. He said as he remembered his conversation at Arkham last week flashback. There's no way in hell I plan on flying to Metropolis when it would seem better to drive over there. Naruto said as he sat in front of his girlfriend of the visiting area of the asylum. He, however, wasn't alone however as the publisher was currently with a few people in the meeting. Don't tell me you're scared of flying now, don't you? Selena said with a small smirk. Selena was in the group since she wanted to finally meet Pamela when it seemed good enough for the changed botanist to see other guests that weren't on her guest list beforehand. No, it's just that I really don't like being in a confined space while flying thousands of feet in the air. He said while looking away from the two women. It is really quite rational of you not wanting to be in a vulnerable position for several hours on end. Harley said as she was sitting on one end of the table with a clipboard in hand. Harley was mediating the meeting to see how progress is coming along on Pamela's condition. It wasn't normal of an asylum doctor, or an intern in the blonde's case, to be in the visiting area chatting in the party but she was rather insistent in wanting to be a part of them. It's not just that actually. Pam interjected with a small smirk aimed at her boyfriend. He just had a bad case of air sickness on a supposed first flight, among other things. Really? Selena said with a gleam in her eye. Mind telling us? Pam. Naruto said with a twitch in his eye. All right, I won't say it. She said to wave him off. Okay, good. He said as he then realized when she said I. But I will dot. Ivy said as she took over. Oh no you don't. Naruto said as he tried to lunge forward to cover her mouth when Selena grabbed a hold of him and put her hands on his mouth. 
Don't listen to him red. Selena said with a cat's smile. Let's hear the juicy details. He told me that after traveling for roughly two years, he needed to fly into the States from Europe. The Greens champion started out. Sure it started out all right, but things started to go downhill. It was quite fun for the two women to hear Naruto's experience of his first flight while giving him some pity on most of it. From the usual air sickness due to the bad turbulence, bad food, actually being puked by several passengers, and several other problems that made the other two women understand his thoughts on flying. As this was going on, Selena somehow had gotten a hold of her leather whip and tied Naruto up while duct taping his mouth shut so he wouldn't interrupt. He could easily get out of his bindings, but this was one of those times he couldn't reveal his powers in front of anyone. Wish he could so the Uzumaki can stop Pam from telling the story he told to her in passing of embarrassing times he had dealt with. You know Naruto, Harley said after the story was told with her taking off the duct tape, you don't have to let just one experience ruin things, things for other ones down the road. I know Harley, but for all my life I've been on the ground and been fine with not flying at all. He drawled out as he stretched out his mouth to get rid of the odd feeling. But flying isn't you then. Selena added in from what she got from her silverette friend. That's fine and all Naruto but you just need to suck it up at times and go through it. We agree with Selena here and you might as well just go with it to make things easier in the end. Pam said to back up the raven-haired woman's response. You could just take a sleeping pill if it makes you feel better. Harley said with a shrug. Aside from the fact that it'll take you like an hour's worth of flight to get from here to Metropolis. Look, I appreciate your concerns and take things under consideration, but I don't plan on flying anytime soon. So can we please just drop this? He asked the three women. All right, all right. Have it your way. Selena said to him. So aside from that, I think the preserve outside of Gotham got finalized. Flashback end. Honk 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 honk. All right. I'm moving. Naruto yelled out despite the driver not hearing him. Caught up on his recent memories made him not notice the traffic was finally clearing up, causing the drivers to honk at him in irritation. Aside from the discussion with him not enjoying airplanes in general, they ended up talking about the wildlife preservation slowly coming into fruition. After weeks of cleaning and removing the remaining military equipment from the grounds, Mayor Hill had given the okay for the land to develop into a wildlife preserve. It'll take a while for things to be properly taken care of from there but environmentalists are very much satisfied in the end. During those discussions, Naruto noticed that both Pams and Selena were slowly becoming decent friends at best and it'll take time for them to enjoy each other's company despite having good care for the environment. The Silverett knew the two wouldn't become friends by the end of their first encounter like with Harley and both Pams, but it's a start at, le at least. As for Harley, she was starting to get out of her shyness, even if it's just only a little bit at a time. From what Naruto had learned from Selena, the two had met outside of the asylum by chance while running errands and had hung out for most of that day and on the following day with the two not having much to do. Once again, the progress of Harley having another friend was imminent. Few hours later. Feels damn good to be out of that car and on this comfy bed. Naruto muttered as he was sprawled out on his hotel bed with his suitcase not far from him. Being in the car for close to five hours when the trip was supposed to be close to three all because of the weather can be quite tiresome. He got to Metropolis by roughly two in the afternoon, an hour or so earlier than he expected, with the city's roads roughly cleared out so it made things quick for him to get to his hotel. Naruto properly got checked in and the moment he stepped through the door he just wanted to be lazy and sleep for the rest of the day. But with him being cooped up in the car for too long made him want to at least stretch out his legs and go out for a walk, after taking a slight rest. Once changing into a pair of warmer clothes, Naruto had started out his walk of the snowy streets of Metropolis for quite some time. Seeing a lot of familiar sights made things seem nostalgic when he lived here for roughly three years. Even with some other places got replaced made the Silverette want to properly check them out when he had a better schedule idea for his duration here. Growl Naruto's stomach sounded getting the organ's owner to notice the feeling. 
I should have packed more than just that meal for the ride over here. He said as he rubbed his stomach. Now where is a decent place to eat close by? His eyes soon caught onto a diner with the name that seemed very familiar to him, getting the silverette to scratch his head to figuring it out. Bibbo's diner, if I remember correctly, that building was closed down before I left here. He said as he walked towards the restaurant in curiosity. When he opened the door to give off the little bell chime, he was greeted with a familiar sight. Hello, welcome to my diner. The man said before narrowing his eyes at the silver-haired male for a moment before gaining a big smile. As I live and breathe. If it isn't the little runt. Bibbo? Naruto asked getting the man to smile a tad more. Damn, it's good to see you. It's been too long. Indeed, it has been kid. Bibbo said as he came around the counter to come close to the publisher. He was a short-haired, blonde in his early fifties that towered Naruto by several inches with a physique that showed of a retired boxer with him having some weight added on certain areas. He wore a pair of jeans, black non-slick boots, and a red button-up shirt underneath a white apron. So, how've you been old man? The publisher asked with a smile at his old friend. Doing well, obviously. He gestured with a wave of his hand of the diner. I didn't expect you to open up a diner bibbo. I thought you would have gotten the bar. Ace O Clubs I believe. Oh, I got that place as well. Bibbo said with a smirk getting the publisher to look at him in surprise. How the hell did you get both places with a fisherman's salary? Naruto asked before quickly responding. No offense. None taken kid and if you're wondering how. Well let's just say I might have gotten some of your fox's luck before you left. The old fisherman stated. Not only did I win the lottery but I won a poker game to have the bar's deed. Used that money open up this diner and it took time to spruce up both places but it was well worth it. I take it that you're working part time at both places then? Here in the morning and the diner at night? Chuckle most definitely. Though during the spring and summer times, I would switch out of working the diner to going out and be a fisherman. What if some people manage the diner while I'm out and all but I would always manage the bar no matter what? You can take a fisherman out of the sea but you can never take the sea out of the man. The Uzumaki said getting the man to nod at the little logic. So, don't mind me asking kid but why are you in town? Business or pleasure? Bibbo's response was a so and so gesture from the young man's hand before speaking. A little bit of both actually. My company asked me to come over here to find a good location to open up shop. While I'm here, I wanted to at least see some familiar faces that I haven't seen in like four to five years. Sounds like you got a handful to deal with kid. The fisherman said with a knowing nod. So, asides from that, you hungry? My treat. No 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 Bibbo. Naruto said as he tried to wave him off. You shouldn't do that for me man. You should remember my eating habits. Oh, I remember. Bibbo said in a smile with a twitch to his eye. Broke my wallet the last time I treated you to a meal. Reason why I'll only treat you to pie. Chuckle of course. Ring the door opened up with the chime to interrupting their conversation. Hey Bibbo. A man's voice called out from the entryway of the diner. Party for two if you don't mind. Yeah, sure thing Tom. Bibbo said before quickly remembering who he was chatting before turning the silverette around. Hey Tom, you remember little runt Naruto? Wait. Naruto. The man said before giving the publisher a bear hug while cracking his back in the process. Damn kid, it's been ages. It has. Naruto said with a strained voice. Mind letting go? You're crushing my spine. Tom let go of the Uzumaki's back before giving him a pat on the shoulder. Chuckle sorry about that son, but honestly why wouldn't I? It's been a long time since I saw ya that it had.
It has. Naruto said to the older man. Tom was a man in his late forties with graying hair with a beard to match his light gray eyes. He was well fit for his age due to him working as a fisherman practically all his life. He wore black pants and boots while wearing a gray shirt underneath a green button-up shirt and coat. But if Tom was here then where's? Ring hey, you get us that table dad? I'm practically starving. A voice called out from behind Tom getting Naruto's eyes to widen when seeing the person in the entryway. Arthur? The Uzumaki called out getting his attention. Naruto? The blonde asked and before he knew it, Naruto came up from behind and gave Arthur a chokehold. Arthur then fell back to get Naruto to land on his back before the two ended up roughhousing like a pair of brothers making Tom smile at the scene. I guess it's going to be a table for three then. Bibbo said as he looked upon the two youngsters meeting each other after several years. Definitely. Was all the patriarch of the Curry family said as he came up to the two and slammed his fists on top of their heads giving them comical smoking bruises. The group ended up at one of the tables at the far corner of the diner so they can have more privacy. Once they were situated, Naruto decided to speak up first. Why are you two here? In the winter time no less? The publisher asked getting the head of the curry household to laugh. Oh, we still do come by at those times for an occasional visit or getting away from Maine for a while. He said before going into a somber tone. But the reason why we are here was that I had to come over to pay my respects for an old friend of mine and Bibbo's who recently passed. I'm sorry to hear that Tom and hope it wasn't too bad on his passing. Naruto said, said in sympathies. Oh, it wasn't. He was in his late seventies and died in his sleep. Me and Bibbo lost a good mentor, who taught us everything we knew on being a fisherman and dock worker. Well, that's good to know. The Uzumaki said before looking at the blonde-haired son. Not that I'm glad or anything to see you, but why are you here? I came along to help support dad at this time. Arthur said to his friend. Tazuna was practically a grandfather to me. We even had to help support Kaiza, Tsunami and Inari at this dark time in their lives. They very much appreciated it very well though. Arthur Curry is a year older than Naruto with shaggy, sun-kissed blonde hair with sideburns down to his jawline with oceanic blue eyes on his strong features that came from his father. His build was a tad bigger than that of an Olympic swimmer's. The man was currently wearing a pair of green pants with several pockets in them, a grey long sleeve shirt underneath an orange button-up and black boots along with his leather jacket that was off to the side. That's great to know on how much you're looking out for his family guys. Naruto said before glancing at the menu. They are the only other form of family I have asides from dad here. Arthur pointed out before he too looked at the menu. Even though I keep telling Arthur to make friends but he tends to drive them all away. Tom said as he scanned through the list of meals on what to have for the early evening. Bar fights I take it? The silver-haired male guessed with a small smirk knowing it's probably the answer. Yup. But what about finding a girlfriend? Naruto asked the older curry, not seeing the younger curry's eyes starting to twitch. Surely with his good looks and charm he could possibly get one. Same same result I'm afraid. The man said as he shook his head. Sigh I even helped set up some dates but nothing seems to work out. Maybe he's not finding the right girl. He should find one that could actually put up with him. Don't talk about me as if I'm not in the room. Arthur said with his eye starting to madly twitch. The blonde actually forgot how annoying his old friend could unintentionally be whenever he is around him. Things settled down once Bibbo came to their table and took their orders. The three eventually talked about what things had been like since they had last saw each other. With the main natives, it was mainly working at the family lighthouse and usual fishing jobs with not much of a change. After that, the former shinobi started talking about him founding and leading his publishing company. You've done well for yourself in these past five years since we last saw you. Tom said to the publisher as their meals made it to the table. 
First seeing you at the docks for a story for the planet and now a book publisher. It's not easy that I can tell ya. Naruto said as he eyed his food. A lot of times I drink a lot so I can try to numb the pain of paperwork. I even sometimes wish for a simpler life, but what can I do exactly? I love what I do. I hear ya. Arthur said in agreement. Sometimes I've wondered what it would be like to be in a different position in life, but I've been born and raised in my current one. It would be hard for me to change from what I'm comfortable with. Even though I've told you that you should try something else. The eldest Curry told his son. But I have dad. I've worked around all over town in various jobs from the post office, the library, construction work. The blonde listed off. But you feel feel more comfortable working near the ocean, I take it. Nodding at his friend's response, he continued. I was practically born in the water and I work better in the surrounding areas. So, if it means that I'll work as a fisherman, a dock worker or even at the lighthouse for the rest of my life then I'm all for it. Then you should keep doing what you love Arthur. There's nothing wrong with that. That's the plan Naruto. The blonde said before taking a sip of his drink. So, is there anything else going on in your life asides from work or are you just living day in and day out by the punch clock? Oh, if it was ever that simple. Naruto thought as he reflected back to events that have happened for the past few months. Well, I'm actually in a relationship with someone. Really? Arthur asked getting his friend to nod while taking a sip of his drink. So, who's the lucky guy? PFFTWH dash asterisk cough asterisk what? Who's the guy you're seeing? You're saying that to get back at me for earlier, aren't you? Naruto said getting the young curry to smirk at the question. Guilty. With this going on, Tom had to laugh a little on the interaction since he missed seeing this. Okay, we had our laughs here you too. But honestly though kid, who's the lucky girl? Her name's Pam and despite hitting a rocky part of our relationship, we still love each other very much. The publisher started explaining to the two on how he met the botanist at the gala event in Gotham to a few things about her profession. Of course, after remembering the little incident at Arkham, he decided to not bring up too much information other than the basic facts. Well, it's good that you were able to find someone to be happy with kid and hope it works out for the best. Tom said at the end of the explanation. I hope so too. Naruto said as they finished up their meals. Well, it's getting pretty late and I need to get back to the hotel. Same here. The young Curry said before continuing. We've gotta head back home in the morning and our flights at that time. We would have left today but due to the weather our flight got transferred for tomorrow. The elder Curry added in getting the silverette to nod in understanding. Well, that's a shame. It would have been nice to hang out a bit more, but we can't have everything. Naruto said with a shrug. True. But was nice seeing you Naruto and if you're ever in Maine, you know where to find us. Arthur said as he held out a fist bump to his friend. The old Curry Lighthouse. The publisher said in confirmation as he returned the gesture. Never been to Maine before, but I'll be sure to look it up. The Currys nodded at this and said their goodbyes to Bibbo as they left his diner leaving Naruto at the table to pay for the party's meal. So, since you're here in Metropolis, I take it you're gonna stop on by the planet? Bibbo guessed with a small smirk. That's the plan Bibbo and sorry to hear what happened. It's all right Naruto and no worries. Sure, it did hurt hard when I heard Tazuna passed away but I can tell he's in a better place now. The diner owner said as he gave Naruto a box with a full pie inside. Now don't forget your pie kid since this one's on me. Yeah, I remember and thanks. The silver-haired male said as he finished getting wrapped up for the cold weather outside. So, while I'm at the planet, should I expect a few changes over there since I last been there? Bibbo adopted a thinking pose and thought for a bit before responding. Aside from Ms. Grant no longer being there, nothing much has really changed. I think. Good to know. 
the former shinobi said as he headed to the door. Hope you have a good night at the bar old man. The man nodded before remembering something and called out making the silverette to stop. There is one thing though. Which is? Well, Ms. Lane has been rather moody lately and don't know what's wrong. Maybe you could cheer her up. Suggested the old sailor. With me, me here, she'll definitely be in better moods. Naruto said with a smile as went out of the door and headed back to the hotel. He was going to eat the pie in his hotel room while going over the documents of building candidates for the The Future Spiral publishing location. It will be a long day so he needed every bit of energy he can muster for tomorrow. Next day. Sigh while well, that one was a bust. The publisher muttered as he drove to the next stop of his building shopping as it were. He got up early and gotten himself a decent breakfast before making his trek throughout the city of the several locations that could be potential for his new metropolis branch. It was even better when the roads were cleared out of the snow than from the previous day so that made it seem better. But of course, that only hid the difficulty Naruto had to deal with for the majority of this day. His first stop was at St. Martin's Island, where the rich and wealthy of the city's denizens are located. Sure, the location was pretty nice and spacious on what he saw on the tour but the price was practically ridiculous with it being worth a few locations altogether. The second was a location in Hobbs Bay where the river connects to New Troy, the central area of the city. It sounded promising when he was looking through the documents of the place but when he got there, the location was burnt to the ground due to some troublemakers burning the place up last night. Currently, Naruto was on his way to New Troy where all of the city's main action was taking place and hoped this last location would do well. When he pulled up to the building, he saw a pair of people walking out of the front door. One of them, the publicist guest, was a realtor given the suit he was wearing, the badge and clipboard Naruto has seen in the past hours of today. The second one, however, got the former shinobi to groan knowing the man was going to buy out the building. Getting out of the car, he went up to the two like nothing is happening. Then it seems we've finished our business here sir. The realtor said as he shook the man's hand. But of, of course. I'll send over the rest of the payment and paperwork by the end of the day. The man stated until he saw someone walk up to them. May I help you? Oh, nothing of the sort Luther. The publisher said to hide his peeved feeling. I just showed up for an appointment for a tour of the building, but it seems that you already bought it. Luther was a Caucasian male in his thirties that had a good physical physique hidden underneath his dark suit. He was bald and the only form of hair he had on his head were his eyebrows. His strong, firm voice that he projects had hints of arrogance while his dark, gray eyes seemed to hide hidden agendas. I'm sorry Mr. Uzumaki. I was indeed going to give you a tour of the building but Mr. Luther already came forward and paid the down payment up front. The realtor said in an apologizing tone. No 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 it's all right. Mr. Luther beat me to it and I can't do a thing about it. Naruto said to the realtor before addressing the billionaire. So don't mind me asking but what are you going to make this building into? Well since you seem to be such a good sport, I'll humor you. Luther said with a smile that seemed to annoy the silver-haired man. I'll be outfitting the building into either another R&D or science division once I got out some parts of the area. But why this location? The publisher asked in interest. Wouldn't it be better if it was in the outskirts of the city or in a safer area in general? The bald man took pause at this to quickly think of an answer. Mr. Uzumaki, was it? To tell you the truth, I was taking interest in one building in Hobbs Bay but it was burned to the ground. So, I had to make up for it by taking interests in this building. I saw promise in both locations on varying ideas on what could be placed so I needed to snag them when possible. It didn't, it didn't take much to think that Luther had some ulterior motives in this scenario given some small rumors he'd heard in the past years of some business deals but there was nothing to really back it up. So, with that Naruto took a sigh of defeat and had to suck it up. Then I guess congratulations are in order for you Mr. Luther and I hope your business decision today does well for you in the future. 
Naruto said as he held out his hand for good gesture. The corporate man looked at the offered appendage for a brief moment before taking hold of it and shook the publisher's hand. You're welcome and yes I do hope this does well in the near future. Once that was over, he walked towards his car where a woman stepped out of the driver's side and walked around to open up the door for Luther to step in. From what Naruto inspected of the woman, she was roughly a few inches shorter than him while wearing a black chauffeur's uniform to contrast her slight fair skin. She wore no makeup on to show her beauty with her sharp features with her light gray eyes. Naruto guessed she must have longer hair given the fact with how big of a hat she was wearing to show it was slightly bulging. Thank you, Mercy. Luther said before taking a pause and turned to the publisher. Oh yes. Now I remember where I heard your name before. Naruto Uzumaki of Spiral Publishing, one of the best-known publishers on the globe. Took a bit for me to remember. Chuckle I wouldn't brag about me being one of the best Mr. Luther. Oh, but indeed you are Uzumaki. Given the chances that you have snagged the best writers, both veteran and upcoming, into your company that ended up making outstanding works. Not to mention of you writing a good handful of novels as well. The bald man said while getting Mercy to look at the silver-haired male and gave him a smile with her eyes to light up. Well, those were honestly good choices I had made with very lucky breaks mind you. The former shinobi said while scratching the back of his head. Indeed. Luther said before continuing. So pray tell why are you here in Metrop Metropolis? I'm guessing with you wanting a tour of the building seems that you wanted to open up a branch here. Naruto nodded at this before telling the corporate man in front of him. My branch in New York suggested me to find a suitable location here to help make things more profitable and I wanted to appease them. So yes, I'm currently searching for a building to my standings but I'm afraid I've had no luck on my end. And such a shame too since as of right now nothing is available at this time. So I guess so. I'll be contacting my branch and let them know of the bad news since they were hoping something would be available soon. Then good luck in the near future. With that said, Luther sat down into his car before Mercy closed the door with the realtor leaving the area to head back to his place of business. Naruto was about to leave as well but soon saw the woman walk up to him with a growing smile on her face. I take it you're one of my fans aren't you? Naruto said with a small smile knowing where this is going. Yes I am. She said as she had no restraint on her gushing over him. Even though you must have heard this dozens or hundreds of times but I love how you wrote your works with very intricate details like you were there yourself. Chuckle asterisk then I'm glad to bring you some form of entertainment. He said to her as he saw the sparkles in her eyes. The publisher then saw Mercy walk over to the passenger's door of the car and open the glove compartment to pull out something. He guessed it was one of the books but he didn't expect to see all five from the three Ika Ika books, the gutsy ninja and ninja storm. She practically skipped her way towards him and held them out to him. Am mind doing me a favor and sign these for me? It would mean a lot to me. She said with a slight stutter at the start making him laugh a little. Sure, why not? He said as he pulled out a pen from his coat pocket and opened up the front cover. I know I usually say this every now and then, especially with me hearing your first name but, what do I make this out to? Mercy Graves. Mercy said to him with giddiness in her voice. My name's Mercy Graves. He gave her a smile that made her blush slightly before looking down to the page before him he wrote inside of it. He then switched to each of the books and wrote down the same passage before handing them all back to Luther's chauffeur. Once this was done, she opened up the cover to see the message below. To one of my favorite fans and hope this brightens up your mood on the darkest of times. Naruto Uzumaki Below the passage showed a little chibi drawing of Naruto waving at her with one of his smiles to which she couldn't help but find cute. Thank you, Mr. Uzumaki. She said while holding the books close to her chest. This means a lot. You're welcome and since you're one of my fans I could let you in on a little secret. He said in a cheeky tone that made her smile a little. Which is? 
I'm practically done with my latest book and I plan on having it hit shelves in a matter of weeks. Naruto said getting her eyes to bulge out slightly and made her even more giddy than before. Really? Then what is it? The assistant asked before quickly waving him off. Wait don't tell me I want to have it as a surprise. But mind telling me what the book is called so I can look out for it? The book is being called Loveless and the only thing I want you to expect from it is being an epic poem. He told her making her smile at the information. Can't wait. But anyways I hope you have a good day Mr. Uzumaki. Mercy said as she headed back to the car. It's Naruto. You can call me Naruto if you want. Naruto said making her look back with the kept smile. Once turning back around, she kept on walking with a small skip to her step with a small hint of her swaying her hips. At least she is better than some of my rabbit of fans in the past. He thought as he saw Mercy get into the car and drive off to whatever else Luther has plans for the day. Sighed now what am I going to do? He thought as he made his way to his car. Car. He'll need to inform his New York branch of the latest developments that things will be put on hold on the new location by the end of his trip. I have a lot of time now to kill till I need to head back home. Naruto muttered as he started up the car. But what should I do exactly? A quick thought came to the forefront of his mind getting him to snap his fingers before driving his car to the next destination. Daily Planet I hope these can at least appease Lois and Perry while I'm here. Naruto said to no one in particular as he had bags of food from Big Belly Burger in each of his hands. He was currently in the elevator waiting to get onto the main floor of the business. On his way over to the planet, he had stopped on by a Big Belly Burger to grab some food from what he remembers on the various food runs he had to grab for Perry, Lois, and Cat. Given the fact from what Bebo told the publisher last night that Lois has been moody so possibly the food could help. As for Perry, well he might as well get him something if he is showing up unannounced or if the man is in a bad mood. Once the elevator opened back up, Naruto was greeted to the old site before him of the ground floor of the Daily Planet. The varying desks with the computers attached, the several large windows onto the side giving a grand view of the city, and the giant model of the company logo right above some of the elevators on the side of the room. They even have the same old green paint on the walls. He said out loud as he navigated his way to Lois' desk, if it was still her same desk. Desk. Well, well, well. If it isn't the old intern Uzumaki. A voice called out getting Naruto to turn around to see a familiar face. Hey Ron, how's it going? The publisher greeted the reporter. Ron Troop is an African-American male with a soldier's haircut and thick mustache working for the planet, wearing a cream sweater with a gray suit. Doing well kid. The man greeted. It's been a while, hasn't it? You know it. Not that I mind seeing you but why are you here? Well, I'm here on business and I had time to kill. So thought I could come on by to see Perry and Lois. Naruto said before looking around the room. So just wondering but is Lois here at the moment or can you direct me to her desk? Don't know if she still has her old spot since I interned here. I might as well show you her desk. Tom said as he ushered the silver-haired man. She's currently out at the moment but will show back eventually. Good to know. Just wanted to drop off her food before seeing Perry. I can tell. The dark-skinned man stated. You know, ever since you and Kat left, it's been a bit quiet. Yeah, I bet. Naruto said, referring to all of the banter between his two female friends and some of his old antics. It really didn't take long for Tom to show the publisher Lois' desk, with it not far from her old one if he remembered correctly. Well, here it is. The male reporter said. I gotta head back to do my thing now, so see you later. Later Tom. The former shinobi said as he waved the man goodbye. The hazelite man soon set his gaze at his old friend's desk and saw a few pictures on display. The first one was a picture of Lois' deceased mother, Ella Lane, where Naruto could tell where all the beauty came from. 
The second one was probably an updated picture of Lois' family members of her father Sam and her younger sister Lucy. The last photo was the three friends together when Naruto and Kat were still a part of the Daily Planet. I should probably leave this here just in case she comes back soon. He thought, he thought before writing a little note on her desk. Once that was done, Naruto made his way to Perry's office to finally say hello to his old boss which was located at the far end of the current room. As he got near, the publisher started hearing some yelling coming from the room. Seems someone pissed Perry off really badly, either that or it's one of his off days. He said as he got to the door and knocked. Yes, what is it? Perry yelled from the other side of the door. Opening the door, Naruto gave his old boss a reply. Hope this isn't a bad time for a visit Perry. Hearing the voice, Mr. White looked up from his desk to see the old intern that used to work for him roughly five years ago. When he set his gaze upon the silver-haired male, he gave out a small snort with a smirk before looking back down onto his work. It's been a while hasn't it Naruto? Perry said as he kept his focus on his paperwork. Sorry if I'm not in a hugging mood of sorts. I understand Perry and I hope I didn't come in at a bad time with me hearing you yell moments ago. The former intern said to Mr. White as he entered the office. The editor-in-chief of the Daily Planet is an African-American male in his early fifties with a heavy set physique with his dark, short hair starting to gray out on various areas. He was currently wearing a white-slash-gray plaid shirt with a red tie underneath a black sweater vest that went with his dark suit indicated with his jacket hanging from the post near his desk. It's nothing really. Perry said as he waved it off. Just some issues in one of the departments. Well hope this helps make things better. Naruto said as he brought up a bag of Big Belly. Got some of your favorites, chicken Caesar, fries, and a cheeseburger with special sauce. Well that saves me the trouble on what to get for lunch. The editor said as he snagged the bag from Naruto's hands. So how have things been since I'd been gone? The publisher asked as he sat down on the nearby seat. I was told by Tom that things have been quiet. Naruto asked. In a way, yes. Perry said as he moved a few things on his desk to the side for his food. Nothing really has changed since you left asides from Cat and Lois bickering at each other more often. Though when Cat left things really died down on volume and excitement. Dot. So yeah I figured as much. Meanwhile, Ding the elevator to the main floor of the planet opened up to reveal several people starting to walk out leaving one person at the very back of it. I know, I should have listened to you sooner when you noticed all of the red flags. The person said as she walked out of the elevator just as it closed. Hell, I should have noticed sooner when I was dating the man. Yes, I'm glad I dumped his ass, she said as she got closer to her destination, though I wished I could have done that sooner to at least save me the trouble. Anyways I'm at work now so I'll talk to you later. The woman said as she approached her desk. Yeah, love you too cuz. Say hi to your parents for me. Bye. She said as she ended the call and shook her head. God, Chloe can be such a worry wart sometimes, wait, what's this? She noticed a bag of food from Big Belly Burger on her desk and slowly opened it up to see what was inside. With the lettering on the burger wrapper, this is my preferred meal, same with the salad. She thought before noticing the note underneath the bag before reading it. Hope you enjoy your meal. N. Something about this seemed to throw her off for a moment if there was someone that seemed to know her too well to get her meal just right. But even more so was the note. The only person who would do this, with the handwriting. She thought before her eyes widened as she started looking around for the person. Person. Leaving the food on the desk, she decided to make her way to Perry's office to ask if he saw him. Once opening the door, she called out to her boss. Hey Perry. Have you seen? Naruto? The woman said getting the person in front of Perry's desk to turn over. Once the man looked back, he gained a look of surprise before smiling at her. Hey Lois. 
the publisher said as he got up from his seat and walked over to her for a hug. It's so good to see you. Overcoming her surprise, she started to feel very happy on seeing her old friend. Thus she returned the hug as well. It's so good to see you as well Naruto. The reporter said before she broke the hug with a smile. Not long her smile turned into a frown with her eyes narrowing that seemed to worry the silver-haired male. And, is something wrong Lois? He asked and all that he got in return was. Bam slap bam. Why didn't you tell me you were showing up? She yelled at his down form with a twitch to her eye. I forgot of how violent she can be. Naruto thought as he had comedic bumps on his head and a handprint on his face. I gotten more bruises from her than from Sakura and Tsunade back home combined. W well I wanted to make it a surprise Lois. He said to her as he got up from the floor. And I was mostly here on business. Really? Lois said as she narrowed his eyes at him again to make him agitated. Yes really. From there, she came up and quickly pulled him back into a hug. Oh god I missed you. She said making him chuckle at her antics. Even Perry chuckled at the scene in front of him for the slight entertainment, entertainment for his meal. I've missed you too Lois. When pulling away, the reporter started checking him out with an analytical eye before giving the publisher a smirk. You appear to have turned out all right since I last saw you, Whiskers. She told him making him smile a little. Same to you I guess. He replied back as he inspected her as well. Lois Lane looked well for a woman in her late twenties with hints of a fit figure underneath her winter attire which consisted of a slightly thick grey jacket, long black skirt, black leggings and a dark scarf around her neck. With her natural features, she had grown more beautiful in the past four to five years since he last saw her with her facial features more defined. Her sharp, purple eyes seemed to pop out with her long, black hair that reached past her shoulders with a bang across her forehead. The only makeup she wore was the red lip gloss on her supple lips with no other add-ons to her appearance, besides from her mother's earrings. So, you said you were mostly here on business. So, what's the reason? The dark-haired woman questioned him as her reporter mode kicked in. Well, I'm here since my New York branch asked me to find a location here in Metropolis to help improve certain dealings. Ah that usual excuse for most businesses. Nodding at this, he continued. Even though I could let my branch find a suitable location on their own here, but I felt it would have been better for me to find it. I'm sensing an additional, but in there. Sigh, but my search hasn't been successful. Naruto said as he then explained to her, and unintentionally, to Perry, of today's events. Sorry to hear all that Naruto and I wish it could have gone better for you. Lois said in sympathy. Thank, thanks. He replied to her. Sigh, it's gonna be a while until I can possibly be able to get a branch opened here. You know, Perry interjected into the conversation as he ate a few fries, I might know a spot that you can possibly do your branch at. Hearing this, Naruto asked. Really? Where? It's this one spot at Queensland Park. The editor said as he took a bite out of his salad. Hasn't been used in years and think it would be nice to have it opened again. It took a few moments before the two friends to gain a realized look. Wait. You aren't suggesting. The old printing plants? Perry finished their thoughts getting them to nod. Yes, that's what I have in mind. But don't you still own it, Perry? Naruto asked as the thought was trying to wrap though his head. I do, he said while taking more bites out of his salad, but it's been collecting up dust ever since I transferred the whole staff over here in New Troy with the current building you two are standing here. Scratching his head, Naruto thought for a moment before speaking. So? Perry. Can I have it? Sure. The editor said as he looked at the former intern. If you can pay for the building itself and all that fun stuff for me to transfer the deed and rights to you. This made the former shinobi smile at the offer and went up to his former boss and held out his hand. 
Thank you sir and I hope you won't regret this. I won't, he said as he shook Naruto's hand, you're a good kid and pretty responsible. Besides I need to get rid of that place sooner or later. Then I'll inform my New York branch to help get things settled with you for the building transfer. Good. Now do me a favor and leave my office. Perry said as he tried to shoo them away. I want to eat the rest of this in peace before continuing work. When the two old friends left the office, Lois was the one to first speak. Well, congrats on the new location whiskers. Thanks, I needed given the stress I had today. So, so, what are you going to do for the rest of the day? Well, I need to contact the New York branch on the latest development, but aside from that I have no clue what to do. He informed her as they walked towards her desk. So, when do you need to get back to Gotham? Well, I was expecting to only stay for a few days just in case of searches, but with Perry offering to sell the old printing plant I could possibly leave sometime tomorrow. Something about the last part of the statement bugged Lois a bit on how he said that he would be leaving tomorrow even though he had a few days being here. Soon things clicked together making her voice her thoughts. You drove here, didn't you Naruto? She asked making him scratch his head before nodding. Why haven't you gotten over your stupid airplane problems after all this time? Sai, I do not want to go over this conversation again. He said as he rubbed the bridge of his nose. I already had this conversation with my girlfriend and I don't want to deal with it again. Wait. You have a girlfriend? She asked in surprise getting him to widen his eyes. Shit. I didn't want her to know I'm in a relationship. He thought as he berated his slight mistake. Now she'll be bugging the hell out of me in her older sister mode for more info. Well. Lois said as she wanted to know everything. Can we talk about this later Lois? I don't feel comfortable. Doing it here. Naruto said as he gestured the current environment. This caused her to notice on how he said it that talking about his girlfriend is a sensitive subject to him. I'll tell you about her Lois. I promise. Lois thought for a moment to process the information before replying. Sai so maybe after I get off, we can go hit the Ace O Club so we can not only talk but also catch up. Thanks Lois. He nodded at her suggestion. Hope you enjoy your lunch. Still thank you for the meal, Naruto. You're welcome. The publisher said as he walked away before stopping. Stopping. Oh yeah, what time do you get off today? This made her slap her forehead before telling him her clock off time. With that said, Naruto said his temporary goodbye to her as he left for the elevator while Lois started to dig into her meal. Later, Aso Clubs. The sun was setting upon Metropolis when Naruto pulled up to the bar. Gotta say, Naruto said as he got out of his car and looked around the building, this place looks a whole lot better than the previous place. I actually feel safer here. At first, the publisher had thought that the ASO clubs was still located back at the suicide slum of the city. He was worried as to why Lois had suggested him meet up with her at that bar even though Bibbo had bought the place out. It turned out when he checked online for directions of the place just in case, the bar was relocated to New Troy from its original placement. From what the former shinobi remembered of the old location, it was a mixed standing in that particular area of the city as the hangout of the lowlifes. Shunned by those who are better, it is often infiltrated by up-and-coming reporters, bloggers and wannabes, eager to make the most of the loose lips a few drinks often encourages. The problem for the infiltrators, though, was that they were quickly sniffed out and ejected. It was a loud place with loud voices, and underneath the din are the mutterings of plans, proposed escapades, and exchanges of information. Kidnappings, assassinations, leg breakings and so on, are all discussed under the clamor of the latest ball games, games and heated arguments. Naruto should have asked Bibo more about the bar when he saw him yesterday at the diner but instead, he ended up looking online for information. In a news article, dated shortly after Naruto had left Metropolis, a fire broke out in the slums and the bar was among one of the various buildings burnt to the ground. 
Since Bibbo had the deed to the bar when it burnt down, he got a lot of the insurance money and decided to move the bar out of the slums to a safer location. When opening the doors, Naruto saw things like it was from night and day. From what Naruto remembered of the previous bar location, it was pretty outdated from the style and atmosphere that made things not appealing to most of the public. With the piss-like smell, bloodstains on various areas, and signs of damages due to the occasional bar and gunfights were the usual sight when entering the establishment. Now it was very different, with it up-to-date standards for a bar regulations, the clean atmosphere and much more that was hard to list off. I take it you like the place so far Naruto? Bibbo asked as he walked up to the Uzumaki. Yeah, I do Bibbo. The publisher replied as he looked around more. Though I do wonder why you didn't mention more of this yesterday that the previous place was destroyed. Hey, it slipped my mind honestly. The sailor apologetically said before continuing. It's been so long since I talked about it that I hardly even talk about it. Hey, it's all right and no worries. So why are you here, kid? Just checking things out more of the city and getting a beer? Something like that. Naruto said to the old man. Lois wanted to chat with me more after work so I'm just waiting here until she shows up. Nodding at this, Bibbo ushered Naruto to the bar and handed him a menu of what alcoholic drinks were available with a separate one for meals as per legal standings to having a bar opened. The publisher only asked for a water with lemons and limes before would show up and that's when the alcoholic drinks will be coming their way. As the, the former shinobi was waiting for his friend, Someone else had entered the bar with a bingle in his hand. With nothing going on, the person walked up to the bar just a few seats away from the publisher. He placed down his bingle to the ground, leaning against the bar's wall before calling out the owner of the establishment. Oh, hey Olaf. Bibbo called out to the man. Hello Bibbo. I'll just be having my usual along with water during the wait. All right. I'll get your order out as soon as possible. Though I wish you go to the diner to make it easier for me. As Bibbo left to gather Olatha's order, after pouring the man a glass of water, things were pretty quiet at the bar aside from the music playing in the background and some other chatter in the surrounding area. Being a bit bored already on the wait, the man spun around on his seat until he saw the person sitting a few stools away from him. Getting a closer inspection, he soon recognized the man. You're the publisher, Naruto Uzumaki, right? The man asked getting the silver-haired male to turn to the source of the question. The man seemed to be at least a head or so taller than the former shinobi with his large stature making the 25-year-old wonder how the stool is able to support his weight. Asides from that, Naruto saw that he's a silver-eyed, red-headed man with his hair tied back into a ponytail and a five o'clock shadow with a goatee. He was currently wearing a green sweater underneath a leather jacket and a pair of jeans and boots. Naruto then noticed the bindle next to him and wondered why the man had that with him. Taking a quick second to shake out of his thoughts, Naruto replied. Yes I am. Ha, I thought I knew it was you. The man happily said as he got off of his seat and got a bit closer to the publisher. I actually enjoy your works and those that you had published. Thank you, Q. The Uzumaki replied with a smile since he usually gets this sort of thing with most fans but still enjoys hearing the little praise. Of course, with the slight hesitation was all because of how towering the man was when he got closer. I'm somewhat of a writer myself. Olaf said as he pulled out a notebook from his jacket. I mostly write in passing since I've been working on my craft for quite a while. Everyone does at some point. Whether it's to vent out certain things, doing a brain dump to put down what the person is truly thinking, expressing things, and various other things. The Uzumaki listed off getting the large man to nod at this. That I agree with. Olaf said as he opened up his notebook and flipped through several pages until getting to one section. Just wondering but what do you think about this? As the redhead said that, Naruto was handed the booklet and read the following passage. Basilisk and Cockatrice, a moral poem. I dreamed I saw a basilisk that basked upon a rocky shore. I looked upon the basilisk with eyes of stone, I looked no more. 
I dreamed I saw a cockatrice a chewing on a piece of bone. I gazed upon the cockatrice one cannot gaze with eyes of stone. To look upon a basilisk is really never worth the risk. To gaze upon a cockatrice is permanent and never nice. For it can never be denied life isn't pleasant, petrified. Well, what do you think? Olaf asked the publisher as he read it again. Well, you used never in the final stanza, making it seem to not really fit in my opinion. Naruto addressed to the tall man. But other than that, the poem reads well. Why thank you. He said with a smirk with his arms folded. At least you're better than Barnabas on his opinions. A friend of yours perhaps? A companion of mine for quite a long time actually. The redhead addressed. Though I sometimes wish he isn't too straightforward on his thoughts. Everyone's a critic in one aspect or another. Naruto replied with a shrug. Shrug. True. Naruto took a sip of his water as a question came to mind. I think I heard Bibbo said your name was Olaf, right? Sounds Icelandic or Norse, I think. Actually, it's short for Olethros. The now named Olethros stated. I sometimes prefer Olaf at times. Then it's nice to meet you Olethros. Naruto said as he held out his hand, which the large man received and shook it in turn. So don't mind me asking but what do you do for a living? The Uzumaki asked before pointing to the bindle on the ground. Don't mean to offend or anything but with what you brought in I'm guessing you might be in between jobs right now. Nah, it's all right. Olethros said as he waved the publisher off. I'm mostly a freelance artist if you will. Like what exactly? Well, I've done some pavement art in London and street art in Paris, France. I've done some maintenance works at various cathedrals in the world. Hell, I've even spent a month living in this one Spanish town and forged cave paintings over there so they can have some tourist attractions. Olethros listed off getting a reaction from the last one from the former shinobi. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that last one illegal? Yes, it is, but the town needed the help at the time and I couldn't say no exactly. Yeah, I get what you mean. Naruto said as he remembered past times, he went out of his way to help others back in his home reality and during the past years here. So, is there anything else you enjoy doing? I do enjoy doing restorative works by going to various churches and other places around the world and either touch up ruined works or make them appear what they were like when they were first made. He said as he gestured to the tab in his notebook in the silver-haired man's hands. Turning to the pointed out section, Naruto saw various photos that Olethros had taken of his various works with ones with him inside of the frame to, to show proof. Going through several pages, he took glances of the details of the works that he could try and see from the photos taken. These look very good. Naruto said with a small smile. I guess you took a lot of pride when handling these works. Definitely. Helps make me forget of what I did for my previous occupation. Olethros said getting Naruto to look at him and wonder what the occupation was. I'm guessing. It's something that's really hard to get out of. Sai you can say that. The man somberly said. I enjoyed what I did in my previous career. It helped make things out of most to help progress. I'm sensing a but in there. But there was something I came across that made me no longer want to be associated with my job with the end result. So I left it all behind, my responsibilities, my home, my family. The only things I had kept from my departing are all in my bindle. The redhead explained getting Naruto to look at him and guess that he went through a lot before making a big change in his life. It must have been hard for you to do all that. The publisher finally said. To drop everything and try to move on from that life. All because of one little instance. Yes. Even with my abandonment of my former occupation, the end result still happened and it made me realize that even with me gone, things still kept going on without me being a part of it. Obviously. Some wheels keep on turning without someone being there to keep pushing or turning it. 
Once the ball is rolling, it keeps on going. Naruto said, getting Olethros to nod. I realized that fact a long time ago. Even when I went into creating things being the exact opposite of what I did. But what about your family? The Uzumaki asked to change the subject. Subject. Don't they miss you? They probably are still missing me even to this day. Sai I can tell that they would want me to come back home and even a few of them would want me to take up my old job, but I would still refuse. The man said as he scratched his head and looked off to empty space. Then tell those siblings that you won't take up that role anymore. Naruto blandly said getting Olethros to look at him with a raised brow. You seem very fine with what you're doing and things are still going on with your old job that it probably doesn't really need you anymore. The large man kept staring at the smaller one as the smaller one kept on going. They think that you're someone of big significance that things won't really run properly without you, but they are wrong. Sometimes people need to be reminded that you don't always have to follow what destiny has written for you since you can make your own fate. We really can't know what we are doing, we just do things we feel are right and pretend that we don't. After Naruto finished his piece, Olethros kept on looking at the man sitting in front of him to let it sink in before he couldn't help but chuckle a little before it went into a bellowing laugh for a few moments. This got varying people in the bar to look at their direction, but it was only temporary before going back to their own thing. Why you know, asterisk cough asterisk you sounded just like my sister just a minute ago and she actually told me almost the same thing you did. The redhead said, getting the silver-haired man to tilt his head in slight confusion. Really, Naruto asked him getting a nod from the man. Then she must be one very smart woman. She is. Was all the man said as he kept his small smile on his face in remembrance of that same conversation all those years ago. But still Olaf, the publisher said getting the freelancer to snap out of his thoughts, thoughts, you should still see your family, even if it's for a little while. You should still visit them from time to time to at least settle their nerves and worries. It would make them happy to spend some quality time with them before you go back doing your own thing. Unless if some of those family members are complete and utter assholes, then to hell with them. When hearing this, the man leaned back and thought things over from what Naruto said to him. The man scratched his brow a few times before he sighed from what was told to him. I think you're right Naruto. Olethros said with a slight defeated tone. I should visit my family to at least get this out of the way. A few of my siblings would still want to see me and I know I can make them laugh and smile just the way I do to get them out of their funks. Good to know. Though you don't have to see your family so soon, just go when you feel seems appropriate to actually see them. The hazel-eyed man said to the silver-eyed one. I'm not forcing you on this at all since this is just a suggestion really. I know that but I will take your suggestion and try to see them eventually. The large man said as Bibbo came out from the kitchen with a few bags in hand. Well, here you go Olaf. Took a while but got it all ready for you. The sailor said as he handed the freelancer the food. Thanks Bibbo. Hope you have a good one. The man said as he fished out his wallet and paid for the order. Will do. The bar owner said as he went over to some other customers. When Olethros got up from his spot, he picked up the glass of water and chugged it all down without taking any breaks before putting the glass down onto the counter. Well, it's been nice chatting with you Naruto and I hope I won't be disappointed in what books you bring out to the masses. The man said with a smile as he picked up his bingle from the ground. Oh, I won't, Naruto said with a slight laugh as he handed back Olethro's notebook, I take pride in what I do now and I don't plan on ruining my reputation on that. I can tell. The silver-eyed man said as he walked to the exit with his items in his hands before stopping for a moment. There was one thing that my sister told me when I last saw her and it didn't make much sense to me back then but I understand what it meant sometime later. Which is what exactly? People always hold on to old identities and faces long after they have served their purpose, but you'll need to learn to throw away things eventually. Was all the man said as he headed out of the door. Once he was out of sight, Lois came in before looking for her friend. Oh, there you are. She said as she walked over to the publisher. 
Sorry I'm late, Perry had a few things for me to do at the last minute. Hey it's alright Lois. He replied as he waved her off. I was having a nice chat with someone and made me think on several things. Like what exactly? Nothing that you should really worry about. All right. She said as she sat down next to Naruto. So, you promised me to talk about this girlfriend of yours back at the planet. Mind telling me now? Sigh yeah I might as well. Naruto said as Bibo came up to them and asked for their orders. As soon as the sailor left, Naruto put all of his focus on the coming conversation on what is appropriate to discuss. Her name is Pamela Isley and I first met her at a gala. As this was going on, a woman was looking from the scene before her with a small smile on her black lips. The woman in question appeared as an attractive, pale young gothic woman with hair as black as the night sky that reached to her shoulders with some bangs coming across her face. She wore a set of black clothing which consisted of skinny jeans with a studded belt and a tank top. She also wore a leather jacket and boots with a silver ink on a chain around her neck. The last distinguishing feature about her was a tattoo like marking similar to the eye of Horus around her right eye. Thank you, Naruto Uzumaki. She said towards the silver-haired man with a voice that would make others feel happy to be drawn towards and feel safe. Even though he can't hear what she is saying, he suddenly felt happy all of a sudden while talking to Lois about Pam. Thank you for telling my brother what he needed to hear. The gothic woman said as she got up from her seat in the bar and walked out of the door to continue her busy work. After all, death rarely has any time off. That's it for this reading. Hit like and subscribe for a free ticket pass going to the different worlds of anime fanfiction. Looking forward to having you on board again.